The following is a presentation of Sports South. Tonight in Boone, North Carolina, the Southern Conference title could be on the line. Jerry Moore's Appalachian State Mountaineers are 4-2 and, and have given up only two touchdowns at home at Kid Brewer Stadium all season long. ASU will need a big defensive effort tonight as unbeaten Marshall thunders into town. The thundering herd is averaging nearly 47 points a game. Jim Donnan has won a national title in Huntington, but still hungers for a league championship. We're bracing for a battle royale in Boone. It's Marshall and App State. Something's got to give, and it's next on the Thundering Herd Network. Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina. It's NCAA 1AA college football, Southern Conference style, as the top ranked Marshall Thundering Herd meets the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Hello again, everybody. Dave Weekly with you from a wet and wild Kid Brewer Stadium. Well, Marshall is top ranked in 1AA football. They stand at 7 0. But if they want to stay undefeated, they're going to have to take on and defeat a tough group of Appalachian State Mountaineers tonight. Let me bring in my partner, Sonny Randall. He's a bit soggy, but he's still ready to go, believe you me. Sonny, Marshall's, if they're going to win the game tonight, they're going to have to do it without Tim Martin. The Southern Conference leading receiver has a ruptured tendon in his left thumb. He's out. How's that going to affect the game? Well, David, you don't lose the top receiver in all Southern Conference football and it not hurts your offense. One of the young kids has got to step up. They've got four outstanding receivers, all youngsters. One of them's got to stand tall here this evening. The rain is definitely going to be a factor tonight. This is an old turf these two teams will be playing on. It's going to be very, very slick. Let's check our keys, Sonny. Well, as far as Appalachian State's concerned, they need to control Marshall's offense. If they control it, they feel like they got a chance. Otherwise, Marshall controls the whole football game. They have to establish a running game. They can't throw it every down. A minimum of turnovers. Turnovers here tonight, and I tell you what, a team could be in trouble. For Marshall, it's going to be pressure against pressure, and it's just going to be at the end who handles the pressure the best. This is a crowd that Marshall's not used to, a hostile crowd. I know one thing, the Marshall football team would like to take the crowd out of the game early. Turnovers, again. It's always big for both sides. It's going to be huge here this evening. Well, take a look at Chris Parker, the Southern Conference leading rusher in two years and 500 carries. He's only got three fumbles. What about our key performers tonight? Well, for the apps, Chip Hooks. It seems like he's been here forever. But I tell you, he's a senior now, rushed for 3,000 yards. Is their second all-time leading rusher. He's going to have to be big here this evening. On defense, Dexter Coakley, the freshman of the year in the Southern Conference, Already, he's in on 68 stops. David, he's the real deal. For Marshall, Chris Parker, last week against Western, 138 yards, three touchdowns. He's the real deal, too. Over 3,000 yards, and he's just a junior. On defense, for the herd, Brian Stump. Boy, what a year he's had. And he'll have to be big against that app running game. Folks, Sonny and I are not getting ready for the road company of singing in the rain. We're getting ready to do some college football. It's Marshall on the Appalachian State. Stick with us from a wet and wild Boone, North Carolina. Marshall University football is brought to you in part by the Ashland Oil family of companies urging you to get involved when parents help. Just imagine how much more a child can learn. By Bank One, West Virginia Corporation. Beachwood aged Budweiser. It's always been true. This Bud's for you. By Foodland. Look for the red shelf tags at Foodland for hardworking low prices. You'll notice the savings. By GoMart. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. And by your local Toyota dealer, where you'll find great values like the all-new Toyota Corolla. For quality and value, see your Toyota dealer today. Toyota equals value. 
This is Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina, where the rain continues to come down. Marshall has won the toss. They have elected to receive to start the ball game. And set to kick it off, Alan Gwynn for Appalachian State. In the absence of Tim Martin, we told you about him in the pregame. He's injured, will not play tonight. Jason Grayson, the junior defensive back from McKeesport, PA, is back to receive the kick along with Eric Thomas. On a rainy night in Boone, we are underway. This is Eric Thomas from the seven-yard line. He's got some room. Thomas takes it to the 32-yard line. That's a 27-yard return. So that Marshall offensive unit that's averaging more than 46 points per game, that's third best in 1AA football, comes on to the field. And Todd Donnan is when in one of the hottest stretches of his career. He's the Southern Conference passing efficiency leader. And this first team Marshall offensive unit, Sonny, has just been lights out these last three games. They have been clicking very, very well. And Marshall will start from the eye. Parker. To the 37-yard line, that's a gain of five. It'll be second down and five. And Theron Todd will start at one wide receiver spot in place of Tim Martin, Sean Goodwin. The senior from Sussex, Virginia, will be at the other. Brian Reed has checked into the game. Marshall will go with three wide receivers and just one back on second down and five. 4-3. Donnan checks. Short drop for Donnan. Pass is complete to Sean Goodwin, but he is shy of the first down marker at the 41-yard line. It's going to be third down and a long two. Offensive line for Marshall Aaron Ferguson. The sophomore has had a terrific season. Marshall tends to run off the left side behind Boslett and William Pinnell. And Sean Goodwin, he just caught the pass a moment ago. He'll have to step up and be a big factor in this game in the absence of Tim Martin tonight. Fans on their feet on this third down and a yard. Again, Donovan's checking. Here comes Parker. First down and more to the 45-yard line and across it for a gain of nearly five. Up front, William Peebles, six sacks. He's short, six foot tall, but 260 pounds. He's a handful. Linebacking core, Dexter Coakley was the freshman Defensive player of the year in the Southern Conference last season. He's building on that as a, as a sophomore. Matt Stevens comes in to play tonight with four interceptions. First down and 10. Marshall with the 45. Heard on their first possession. Swing pass to Parker. And he slips on the turf. And I'll tell you, David, you're going to see this all night long. If you don't keep your feet under you, I guarantee you're going down. Balance will be extremely important for the backs and receivers. Little dump off. You get the ball in Parker's hands any way you can. Watch the feet. One foot's down, and it'll go out from under you. You got to keep both of them under you, or you've got no chance tonight. It's a loss of a yard. Heard once again with three wide receivers on second down and 11. Again, down and checks. Here comes Parker. And he is loose. And that goes Parker. Got the first, first down. down. He's got the first down into Appalachian territory. Across the Mountaineers, 45 to the 44-yard line. Appalachian State showing a whole lot of looks, uh, different looks on defense. Donnan is making the right checks, put Marshall in the right play. Boy, does he run strong. He squares those shoulders to the line of scrimmage. Awfully tough to bring down. Matt Stevens makes the stop from the secondary. On first and 10 from the app 44, Chris Gross, the fullback comes in motion. Here comes Parker, spinning, but not much running room. Tossed back after a very short game. Joe DiBernardo made the stop. Sophomore from Miami, Florida, Christopher Columbus High School. Second to Coakley on the apps in tackles. Now with 67 stops. Gain of only two. And he's already had three here tonight, early in this football game. Four 
4-3. Appalachian on second down and eight. Four wide receivers in the pattern for the first time. Here comes Come Chris Gross. Gross had a head of steam momentarily, but he is brought down by DiBernardo at the 40-yard line. A gain of only three. That play opened up quickly, Sonny, but the app linebackers filled the hole. Great reaction here. Little trap. Come around. Quick hit it to the fullback. So the thundering herd looking to convert on another third down situation. Third and six from the app 40. Marshall from the shotgun for the first time tonight. Four wide receivers. Bring it some heat. Linebacker blitz. Pass is intercepted. intercepted. Pass is intercepted by Jamie Coleman. Ball was intended for Sean Goodwin on a crossing per route. Appalachian stops the Marshall drive. Jamie Coleman with a big interception. The Apps have the football when we return to Boone. Well, the elevation of Boone, North Carolina is 3,333 feet. And the Marshall offense, though, did not fly high on their first possession. After converting two first downs, they turn it over. Jamie oh, Coleman interception. Here comes Here Chip Hooks. Yeah, Hooks. Picks up about eight. Yeah, picked up eight. That play worked like a charm for Jerry Moore and the App State Mountaineers. Appalachian comes into play four and two, trying to come off a loss last week at Georgia Southern. So Here's a toss sweep. Chip Hooks, the outstanding senior tailback. Vince Parker makes the stop for Marshall. But not after he picks up eight yards. Senior from Chicago rode him down, but it is a nice gainer on first down. Ten minutes to go, first period, second down and two. Hooks is a lone setback. Here comes a reverse. Satterfield. Reverse option. And he is dragged down by John Duncan from Middletown, Ohio. Boy, it took a long time for that play to develop. I'm not sure if that wasn't a busted play, Sonny. I'm not, I think it was a play. <laughs> okay. But it was an option one way, and then he completely reversed his field and came back here. A misdirection option. Satterfield regained the quarterback spot after a big effort in the second half of the Georgia Southern game last week. In fact, he's the only quarterback in the history of Appalachian State to go for more than 300 total yards in a game. Here's first, the pitch to Hooks. Toss rate. He's got the first, first down and more. Still on his feet. Hooks right down by. Shannon Morrison, but not before he reaches the Marshall 35. And right now, App appears to have the momentum. They're fired up. Here it is, toss sweep. That was the first play that they ran on offense. Chip Hooks, we talked about him in the open. Great speed, quickness. Shannon Morrison finally makes a stop, but not before a big gainer. Marshall number one in the Southern Conference in rushing defense, giving up just 103 ground yards per game, but App having their way in the ground early. The first handoff up the middle to the fullback tonight, Damon Scott from Cedar Grove, North Carolina. Minimal yardage, takes it to the 34, give him a gain of nearly two. It'll be second down and three. Damon Scott, a fullback, but quick enough and enough speed to play the tailback position also. Yeah, he's averaging 5.1 yards per carry, and after Hooks leaves school, they're anticipating Scott will go back to that tailback spot. Two deep zone. Toss Miss, sweep. Here's Hooks again. He's inside the 30 to the 29-yard line before big Byron Turner rode him down. Let's head down to the soggy sidelines where Mark Martin is trying to keep dry and give us tonight's field story, Mark. All right, Dave, and the story from the field, for now, it has stopped raining here at Kid Brewer Stadium, but you know the traction will be difficult for both teams now. You've already seen some slipping and sliding going on. Jim Donnan said this week, if anyone breaks into our locker room this weekend, one thing they won't get is shoes. They brought them all here tonight. Appalachian State also plans to wear several different pairs here tonight, depending on the situation. All right, Mark, we look forward to your reports tonight. Here's the pitch to... Hooks cuts it back. A little short. He is short of the first down marker. He needed to get inside the 32 to pick it up. It's going to be fourth down and short. Decision time for Jerry Moore. Looks like they might be going for it. They've run the toss sweep in uh, three times now. Chip Chooks has gotten outside. That time they made it cut it back. You've got to turn the toss sweep back inside where you've got help. And Marshall wants a timeout. 
on this big early fourth down play, fourth down and two for Appalachian State at the 27-yard line with 7.18 to go. The herd has burned the first of their three timeouts. We'll step aside momentarily. No score from Boone. It's Marshall and Appalachian State. Along with Sonny Randall and Mark Martin, Dave Weekly in soggy Boone, North Carolina tonight. Fourth down and two for the Apps at the Marshall 27. Chip Books, 31 yards on four early carries. Is he the option here? We'll find out. Here's the pitch. Oh, here comes Hooks. No, sir. He didn't make it. He stretches out near the chain, but I believe Marshall's hell. No, sir. Where they spotted it, that'll go over to the herd. So Brian Stump, we featured him in the pregame, comes up big, stuffing hooks, hooks shy of the first down, and the thundering herd takes over on down. So Here it is, toss sweep. Watch the penetration at the top of the screen. There's a toss sweep. Chip hooks. Boy, when you hesitate, boy, look at the close from the secondary. That was Roger Johnson who got the job done. Marshall's got it first and 10 at the 28. Parker spinning. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. The app's awfully stout on defense. I've seen about 10 looks already from that defense. The defensive coordinator, Ruffin McNeil, he said he was going to throw the kitchen sink at the Herd's offense, trying to slow it down. Parker lost a half yard on that play. So it's second down and 11 from the 29. One back set. Parker is the lone setback. Don into pass. Complete. And the reception is made by Brian Reed. Matt Stevens makes a stop for the apps. Reed sophomore from Bradenton, Florida, Southeast High School. Here's another look, three-step drop, actually a five-step drop. Todd Donovan throws it on rhythm. Pretty good catch. Down low where nobody can pick it off. Reed now with eight catches on the year. Third down and a yard. Reed, one of those young receivers that will have to stand tall here tonight in the absence of Martin. Parker is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. I Second don't effort. He I don't know. I, he's close to the first down, but I don't think he has it. It's DiBernardo again. The second effort might have gotten it. I'm going to say the spot will get the first down, David. Well, you got the coach's eyes, son. <laughs> yeah, but you've got uh, four of them. <laughs> That's right. Hey. <laughs> I've got four also. Okay. Five used to just use two, but now I use four. <laughs> 5.49 to go in the first quarter. Hard-hitting game. Well, I'll tell you what. Both teams trying to establish it. the ground game tonight. Oh, yeah, the old coach. <laughs> Good call, coach. <laughs> but down here, you're not really sure with the chains, and there's no bat out there on the field, so it's really hard to get the spot in the mark. First down and 10 for Marshall at the app 38 yard line. Chris Gross from Beckley's checked back into the lineup. He's in the backfield with Parker. Here comes the blitz. The app should bring it some heat. Don in play action. Spins away from pressure. But he is dropped in the backfield for a sack for Appalachian now. 28 sacks on the season. That's tops in the Southern Conference. Well, I'll tell you what, when they bring the heat, you, you, you see it. Sean Elliott makes the stop for the apps. Here you can see his flush, Donnett. William Peoples, he's the guy that made him flush. He's got to get half the sack. So it's a loss of three on first down. Second down and 13. Marshall at their own 35. Nowhere to go. Donnan finds some time. Sends it down the field for Parker. What a great play defensively. Dexter Coakley had one-on-one -on -one coverage with Parker out of the backfield and knocks the football away. Dexter Coakley, we talked about him being the real deal. He's got the speed and quickness of a defensive back, and he's playing a linebacker position. Here he's got Parker, as you mentioned, man-to-man. -man. And Dexter Coakley has him covered like a blanket. What a play by a linebacker. You'd love to get him singled on your best back. 
in the open field. But you see, Coakley is no bargain. So on third and long, third and 13, Marshall will go from the shotgun with four wide receivers. Protection is better for Don in this time. Sends it down the field complete. complete. Big first down. To the app 45 yard line. That is Theron Todd. Theron Todd, he's going to take up the slack, hopefully for Martin. The herd is hoping that's going to happen. Throws it on rhythm. Got it. Perfect throw. And a great catch by Theron Todd. They say he had a big week of practice. Strained a hamstring on Tuesday, but I tell you what, on Wednesday and Thursday, he was healed, or he ran like he was. We're anticipating that we're going to see Theron Todd return punts tonight in the absence of Tim Martin. First and 10 for Marshall at the 45-yard line. Parker in the middle of the line is tripped up by Coakley. What a terrific stop by the sophomore from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Is he a football player or what? They say he might be the best athlete that's ever played at Appalachian State, and I tell you, that's saying a mouthful. Look at his speed and quickness. I mean, the tackle didn't even slow him down. Dexter Coakley, we'll see 32 an awful lot here this evening. Loss of a yard, second down and 11. Shotgun. Gone in to put it up. Pass is caught. Sean Goodwin to the Appalachian State 28-yard line. That's a gain of 16 and a Marshall first down. And again, Appalachian came on a blitz. Marshall was able to pick it up. You get man-to-man -man coverage. And Donnan hits Goodwin on a deep out. Good throw and a good catch and a change move. When you can pick up that blitz, you get man to man. Sean Goodwin, he has really come on this year. Parker, Parker. tripped up, and it's Coakley again getting the penetration from his linebacking spot and tripping up Chris Parker as he reaches the 26. A gain of only two, second down and eight. Got some help that time from Joe Bernardo. And as you can see, the rain has returned. Stopped momentarily, but it's beginning to rain again here in Boone at Kid Brewer Stadium. Parker's out of the game. Gross is uh, the low setback. Second down and eight on the scrap. Donnan on the move. He's got room if he wants to run. Sends it down inside the five. Pass is caught. They're in time. A leaping grab. It's first and goal for Marshall at the five. A 21-yard game for Theron Todd. What a great throw and a great catch. And you see who's there to congratulate him, the guy that threw it to him. Todd Donovan on the sprint. Theron Todd runs a deep square out route. What a one-hander. That was a one-handed catch there. I mean, big time. Another look <laughs> and another one-handed catch. What a throw and a what a catch. So after stopping Appalachian State on fourth down at the Herd 27-yard line, Marshall has marched to the App 5. It's first and goal. Parker inside the 5 near the 3-yard line. Oh, check that. That's Eric Thomas with his first carry of the game. Eric Thomas, the sophomore from Largo, Maryland, checks in. Now Parker is returning. And Thomas will exit. Thomas had that little jitterbug step. And I tell you, when Parker takes it, there's no jitter or nothing. It's north and south with it. But Eric Thomas is available tailback also. Two and a half minutes to go. First period, no score, but Marshall threatening. Second and goal. Parker. He's going to mark it at about the two. And that app defense, especially the front four, is tough to run against. The big guys up front, Elliott, Peebles, Hatcher, and Miller. They've got movement up front. Dealing, wheeling. You can't play base down here. All Out right. of the goal line. All right, Sonny, big game. You're on the road. If you're the thundering herd, is this four down territory? I would think so. I would sure think so, David. Here we go, jumbo look. Power eye, no wideouts. Donnan with the fake. Keeps the ball in the end zone. Pass is caught touchdown. for a touchdown, Danny White. The senior from Los Angeles with the touchdown catch. Danny White made a heck of a catch here, laying out. Great fake by Parker going up in there. Another look. Marshall's quarterback, Todd Donnan, fakes in there. Parker's over the top, gets Coakley. 
Danny White makes a dive and catch in the end zone. Big tight end from Los Angeles, California. A transfer from Santa Monica Junior College with his second touchdown catch of the year, and it's a big one, and the herd breaks on top. Tim Openlander, the sophomore from Tampa, in to attempt the extra point. Brian Day is the holder. Yes! So with a minute 39 to go in the first period at Kid Brewer Stadium, for the Thundering Herd fans, some thunderclaps are in order. Marshall 7, Appalachian State nothing. Well, they're a happy bunch, and why not? Marshall's got the early lead, 7-0 on Appalachian. Tim Openlander is in to kick the football. Jamie Coleman, who stopped Marshall's initial drive with an interception, is back to receive the kick along with Don Blue. That was a mighty impressive drive by the Herd. A couple of big third down calls. And it all started with Marshall stuffing Appalachian on fourth and short at the Herd 28-yard line. This is Coleman from the two. And he is stuffed at the 22-yard line. That's a 20-yard return. Trio, trio. Down to the sidelines. What's up, Mark? Dave, Jim Donnan refers to tight end Danny White as the best blocking tight end he's ever coached. And that's quite a compliment when you consider that Don and coach Kellen Winslow, who had all those great years with the San Diego Chargers, and of course, Keith Jackson, who presently plays for the Miami Dolphins. But White has improved his pass catching ability. And Quite simply, he did it by using hand grips to strengthen his hands and also by juggling. Says he can juggle four footballs at a time. Now, I wonder if Sonny used to do that when he was a receiver, Dave. Uh, well, he didn't juggle too many passes. He wrapped it up. <laughs> Here's the pitch to Hooks, and he is out of bounds at the 27-yard line. That's a gain of five. Good play for App on first down. Second down and five. Appalachian showed us something a little different, Sonny, that time going with a trips left formation. Ran a trips and ran the speed option into the boundary. You're hoping that the defense will favor the wide side of the field. They got what they were looking for. You know, Mark ran down some of the tight ends that Jim Donnan has been associated with. Don't forget Adrian Cooper in the NFL right now playing for the Vikings. He had him at Oklahoma. Second down and five. Here comes Hooks. Oh, boy. Albert Barber turned him inside, but Hooks is able to get near the first down marker at the app 32. What a move. Here it is. Barber's right there. You say you're being kind. He turns it back inside. Parker wraps him up. But that was a big time move and by that, Chip Hooks. And it is an Appalachian State first down. First and 10 from the 33 yard line. Satterfield will operate from the shotgun this time. Three wide receivers. Satterfield sends it across the middle. The pass is in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. We gotta make the play. Here we go. Nate Abraham ran a crossing route. Satterfield hit right in the hands with it. What they did was uh, had three uh, receivers to the wide side of the field, cross the back underneath. And so this time, Wholesale substitutions defensively, and Marshall needs a timeout. Got to have a timeout. Appalachian lined up in a four-wide receiver formation, and Marshall could not get their defensive changes on the field in time. So the Thundering Herd calls a timeout. Wanted to get the nickel package out there, or it looked like the nickel package, but there was some confusion. Well, we saw big number five rushing onto the field for Marshall. That's B.J. Cohen, the freshman from Conley, Georgia, who leads the Southern Conference in sacks with eight. Mickey Matthews talking over things. I guarantee his he'll get it unit. straight as to who's supposed to be out there and who's not. Might have the best defensive mind in all of 1AA football. And I'm not so sure it's not as good as a whole lot in 1A football. What a defensive coordinator. Well, Marshall's defense has been dominating in the Southern Conference. Hurd is number one in scoring defense, giving up just 10.3 points per game. Number one in total defense, number one in passing defense, number one in rushing defense. Last, uh, with good look at Satterfield, boy, last week against Georgia Southern, was he something else? He rallied the apps. Through for some big numbers. And he's getting the start here tonight. 
We saw those herd fans. They're wet and they're apprehensive. Kid Brewer Stadium has not been a very pleasant place for Marshall. This is the tenth time the herd has ventured into Boone, and they've lost seven of those efforts against the Apps. One of the toughest places to play in the Southern Conference, David. Second down and ten, and App will go with a four wide receiver for the zone. Satterfield gets it off. The pass is through the hands of Melvin Cunningham. He nearly had the interception, and the pass was intended for Nate Abraham. Intended for Abraham, but way over his head. And as you mentioned, Cunningham almost comes up with it from the shotgun. Satterfield sets his feet. Looking for Abraham, too tall. Cunningham almost comes up with the interception. Red Jacket, West Virginia native. Got to be tough from Red Jacket. You know it. Just to survive. Played at Mate 1 High School. What a player. Third down and long. Third and 10 for App at their own 33. Too deep zone. Here comes Screen. Cohen on a blitz. In and out of his hands. Tried to slip it to the fullback. Damon Scott could not hold on. And the Mountaineers are going to have to punt. Marshall had it well defensed. Ball went in out of the hands of Damon Scott. And the Thundering Herd fans give their defense a standing ovation. Roger Johnson is the lone back for Marshall. As you can see, the green, all that green on their feet across the way. Alan Gwynn is in to punt the football. Eight on the line of scrimmage. Oh, my. He knocked it out of sight. Roger Johnson, uh, that was a heads-up play, just getting away from the football. So Roger Johnson was back to receive that punt. We had anticipated seeing Theron Todd, but Jim Donnan opting to go with Roger Johnson, who did return punts for Marshall as a freshman. But Alan Gwynn knocked that one in the next zip code. He definitely did. No chance for a return. Roger Johnson just got, got away from the football, didn't like it, got away from it. That was a heads-up play. And for Alan Gwynn, what a punt. 59 yards, no return. That'll do wonders for your net. And he'll do wonders for the defense. Hey, 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 no. Good look at Jim Donnan across the way. First and 10 for the Thundering Herd. Just 32 seconds remain in the first period. Marshall with a 7 0 lead over Appalachian. Parker. And the Apps continue to defense the run well. Well, they've got five on the line of scrimmage right now. An extra man up front. Kind of an odd look. They normally play a 4 3. But we've seen quite a few snaps with five on the line of scrimmage. And as you see Todd Donnan take off the helmet and head for the sidelines, that will be the final play of the first period. 15 minutes in the books at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina. Key Southern Conference tilt. Marshall trying to hold on to their league lead. Lead after the first period, 7-0. Marshall seven, Appalachian State nothing, and there you see Travis Colquitt limbering up that leg, but he hasn't had a chance to punt very much this season. Sonny, he's only punted 14 times in the Herd's first seven games. Well, I tell you what, last night at practice, he must have punted 400 times. I, was, I thought his leg might fall off. Jim Donnan, two and two against the Appalachian State Mountaineers, now in his fifth year in Huntington, second down and nine. Shotgun. Donnan across the middle, pass is complete. Able to get the football to Brian Reed. So Reed comes up with his second catch of the first half, takes it out to the 16-yard line, is going to be short of the first down, however, brings up third down and three. Crossing pattern. Got a clear underneath. Todd Donnett looks for Reed on the crossing route. Heck of a throw and a real fine catch. Four wide receivers for Marshall. Parker, the lone setback. Four down linemen for the Apps. Option, Option for the first time tonight. Here comes Parker. He's got the corner, the first down, and more. Takes on the cornerback and bowls him over and takes it out to the 26-yard line for a gain of 10. And I'll tell you who made that all possible. Theron Todd. What a great block on the outside. Budweiser scoreboard, how about this one? Georgia Southern at home survives a big scare from East Tennessee State, 24-23. It's a W. First quarter, Bulldogs lead UK 
First down and 10 for Marshall. You mentioned that was the first time we've seen the option by Marshall this year. A little surprise for the app defense. Here comes Parker. We've seen him play this year. Fumble, ball's loose. Ball's on the ground. And Appalachian's got it. The app say they have it, and they do. You talked about Parker hanging on to the football. Very seldom does he leave it on the ground. Johnny Smith, the free safety, comes up with the recovery. He knows what the football looks like. He was a three-year letterman at running back, switched over to defense for his senior year. Parker with just his second fumble of the season. Appalachian has the football at the Marshall 28 when we return. Well, Marshall had committed only seven fumbles in the first seven games, but Chris Parker coughs it up here, Sonny, and apps in business. A little delayed counter. See how it comes out. It just pops out. Mm -hmm. Don't think it was stripped. It just was pop, popped out. Two uncharacteristic Marshall turnovers here in the first half. App will try and take advantage. Hooks, nowhere to go. Billy Line from Erlanger, Kentucky, drags him down at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Lion coming up big on first down. From their 4 3 look defensively. That time the Marshall defense just swarmed. Chip Hooks, the fine tailback from Appalachian. Nowhere to go. Big test for the Marshall defense here early in the second quarter. Following the Thundering Bird turnover, second down and long at the 27 yard line of Marshall. Satterfield on the move. He's going to tuck it under and run, and Vince Parker is going to chase him down. The senior from Chicago is there along with middle linebacker Brian Stump, the sophomore from Grantsville, West Virginia. Looked like Satterfield might have a little something going. And all of a sudden, Stump and Parker close from nowhere. There it is. Just reverses out. There it looked like he had some room. Satterfield looking downfield. Here comes Parker and Stump to make the stop a very little game. Third and about six. Big third down play. Three wide receivers. Hooks alone in the backfield behind Satterfield from the Marshall 25. Reverse. Oh, and dead. Marshall's got it sniffed out. Scott, the fullback, is chased out of bounds and knocked out by Jerome Embry. And B.J. Cohen was there to force him out. I tell you, anytime you hesitate, you're lost when you're trying to run that misdirection play. All you have to do is stay, stay as deep as a ball on the reverse. Look at Cohen at the top of the screen. Makes him hesitate. Then he gets some help. But Cohen's the one that made the play. Embry, sophomore from Winchester, Virginia, knocks the, the play out of bounds. Now we have a field goal attempt by Jay Sutton. He has not converted a field goal of this distance all year long. This no one good. is good. Yes, I tell you, the knuckler, I didn't think he got there. A line drive that cleared the bar by a foot or so, and App is able to convert the turnover. That was a knuckler. App is on the board, but Marshall leads in the second period, 7-3. Well, it counts three all the same. What Not a kick by <laughs> Jay Sutton. Not real pretty. Didn't look like it had a chance. It was almost like a knuckler. Wow, look at that thing. Just made it inside, <laughs> but tomorrow morning it looked like he went right down the drain pipe. His longest previous field goal before that kick was a 31-yarder against North Carolina a and but Sutton connects from 41 yards out. Apps on the board. It's 7-3. Eric Thomas from the one-yard line. Slips as he gets started. Can he get outside? Yes, he does. But he is brought down shy of the 20-yard line, knocked out of bounds. At the 17, that's where the thundering herd will have it first and 10 following a 16-yard kickoff return. Appalachian scoring drive, four plays, four it's yards nice in just over 90 seconds. Sutton with the 41-yard field goal. The key, of course, was the fumble by Chris Parker that set up shop for Appalachian State in thundering herd territory. And Gwynn's down there talking about that laser beam. Yeah. <laughs> So Marshall's had two early turnovers, 12-33 to go first half. Marshall with a 7-3 lead, the only touchdown tonight. A three-yard touchdown pass from Todd Donnan to Danny White late in the first period. Marshall has it first and 10 from the 17. 
Hurd continues to try the middle of that line. Appalachian State's tough, though, against the run. And Parker brought down shy of the 20-yard line. Right now, Appalachian State's used an eight-man front. Awfully tough to run against that kind of look. That's the reason the herd has been very successful throwing the football. They've been able to put the clamps on Parker thus far. William Peoples there was there to make the stop. Peoples is some kind of football player for the apps also. He and Coakley, they're special. Donnan with the short drop. Pass is incomplete, intended for the freshman tight end, Jermaine Wiggins from East Boston, Mass. It's third down and long. Tried to run a quick out to the tight end. Three-step drop. Nothing there. So Marshall searching a bit for answers offensively. We told you in the pregame, Tim Martin, the leading receiver in the Southern Conference, 42 catches, scratched for tonight's game after having surgery Wednesday to repair a ruptured tendon in the thumb on his left hand. And, of course, Ricky Carter, they hoped he would be able to go tonight, but he's still recovering from problems on the middle finger of his right Shotgun. hand. No way to go. Donnan swarmed under another sack. And you brought him up moments ago, Peebles. Peebles has been awful big here early. That's his seventh sack of the year. From the shotgun. Pressure early. Peebles gets some help, but he's the main one there. Chip Miller also in Fake. on the tackle. Fake. Marshall's faking. And the pass is caught. What a throw and what a catch. What a pressure play. Marshall, for the third time this year, throws out a punt formation. Shannon Morrison hits Melvin Cunningham. Boy, fourth, what a gutsy look, play. You know, I'll tell you what, the guts of a burglar on fourth down. And you're throwing the ball from your own 18-yard line. That should have been an interference call. What a great throw and an unbelievable catch. Have they missed on a fourth down conversion this year? Shannon Morrison now, four for fourth, throwing the ball. Three for three. 22-yard gainer. The guts of a burglar. Wow, what a big play in the shadow of their own end zone. Marshall trying to get some momentum. Here comes Parker. And there goes Parker. Into app territory, down to the 47-yard line. That's 15 for Parker. You don't call that from your own 18-yard line this early in a football game unless you got an awful lot of confidence. Here it is. Parker bounces outside, squares those shoulders. I'll tell you what, now the secondary's got to, secondary's got to load him up. Got no shot when he squares his shoulders to the line of scrimmage. Best carry of the night for Chris Parker. Marshall at the app, 47. Eight on the line of scrimmage, and here they come. Mark, Parker coughs it up again, and Mark Wicks. Redshirt freshman from Bethel Park, PA, is there to make the recovery. So uncharacteristically, Parker's having trouble holding on to the football today. Well, the ball's wet. The turf's wet. That's no excuse, really. He normally will not leave it on the ground. Ball's just stripped away. Johnny on the spot, Mark Wicks. It'll be second at about 12. Donald Cunningham from Charleston, West Virginia Capital High School is in the game for the first time tonight as Marshall goes with four wide receivers. From the shotgun, it's second and a dozen for Donnan. Protection is good. The pass is caught. A do no, dropped. Sean Goodwin had both hands on it but could not hold it at the app 32. Actually, he laid out for the ball. Sean Goodwin did, and I believe when he hit the ground, the bug charged the ball loose. Marshall was able to pick up the blitz. Here it is from the gun. And here comes the apps with some heat. Marshall's offense is able to pick up the blitz. Sean Goodwin lays out. As I say, the, the, when he hit the ground, that's when it popped out. Had it for a split second. Third and a dozen. Shotgun again. Pass is deflected. Dexter Coakley deflected the pass, and it's fourth down. Apps come up big defensively. So Marshall will have to punt, or at least they're going into punt formation. I would wager that this time Travis Colquitt 
would root it out of there. And I would imagine that somebody is going to be responsible for Melvin Cunningham. <laughs> Look at the app scrambling. Yes, cover sir. those outside sure guys. Everybody's covered outside. Colquitt leads the Southern Conference, averaging 45 yards per kick. Marshall leads 1AA football in net punting, nearly 42 out. yards per opportunity. You're counting. We hear a whistle. Too much time, I believe. This could very well be the first penalty of this football game. We have not seen one of those yellow flags tonight. I believe this is delay. Delay a game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. That'll cost them five, but not critical at this part of the field. Harold Bender is our referee tonight of the Southern Conference crew. Saw the officials before the game. They know how big the this is. Might be the biggest game of the Southern Conference this year. Don Blue is set to receive the punt back at the app 10. He took a 73-yarder for a touchdown against the Citadel earlier this season. App's got mad up, up there. Two in the walk away. Oh, yes. He got all of this one. And it turns over. And let's see if it's going to get in the end zone. Not yet. Oh, what a save. What a terrific play for the Marshall Special Teams unit. They're able to no, know they're going to go into that the zone. into the end zone. Boy, there was a heck of a collision downfield. That was Melvin Cunningham from Red Jacket trying to make a great play at the goal line. Apps got the ball at their own 20 with 9.25 to go in the first half. Back from Boone in a moment. Welcome back to Kid Brewer Stadium. Marshall has a 7-3 lead on Appalachian. The injured herd player on the punt was Jason Grayson. He's out of the ball game momentarily. Appalachian has it first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Here comes Chip Hooks. And Hooks is dragged down from behind by Billy Lyon. And Hooks hits the hole hard, takes it out near the 25-yard line. It's going to be second down and a long five. Bit of a lull here in the ball game early. Like they're sparring with one another. Yeah, that's for sure. Hard hitting game. 4 3. One back set. The speed option. A little option stuff going on, and Hook tries to get to the corner, can't do it. Slips and falls. It'll be third down and three. Jason Grayson's had to make the stop. He got well in a hurry. Junior from McKeesport, PA. Probably a good time to thank all our affiliates and welcome them along. Of course, the good folks at Sports South, KBL looking in tonight, WNBT in Falls Church, Virginia, and of course the flagship, Charleston's very own WCHS TV in Charleston, West Virginia. What an audience for a great Southern Conference football showdown. Third down and three. Satterfield on the move to throw. It is caught. Diving catch by Otis Smith for a first down. Otis Smith just lays out on his deep sprout route. That was a great throw by Satterfield as he sprints. Outside on a sprout route, Otis Smith lays out. He was able to come up with a big catch for the Amps. Also, we'd like to send out a special hello to Marshall's equipment manager, Woody Woodrum, who's back in Huntington tonight getting ready for some surgery. We know he's looking on. Get well soon, Woody. Woody's got to play in pain. I tried to teach him that. <laughs> Speed option. Satterfield dragged down from behind. B.J. Cohen was there along with Billy Lyon. Also, three there three are a three couple three of Charleston, West Virginia natives on this Appalachian squad. Sean Clark and Tony Bequette. Sean Clark's mother, Joyce, back in Charleston in the hospital. And Sean wanted to make sure we sent her a special hello. So get well soon, Joyce. Second down and three. Appalachian from the 40-yard line. Heard leading 7-3. 7.29 to go in the first half. Looks like Satterfield's checking. Speed option. Here comes Hooks. And he is hooked down from behind. But not before he picks up a first down. Pretty good speed option. But you've got to get to that defensive end. Here it is. Right at you. Pitches before he gets to the defensive end. The tailback hooks, gets the football, and picks up a first down. Satterfield, the Appalachian quarterback, he's kind of a blue-collar QB. 
does it all. Not flashy. Very, very effective. First and ten at the 45, Satterfield. On a roll. Moving pocket. Sends it back across his body, and the pass is caught. Tough catch in traffic by Clyde Everett, and he really took a shot from Shannon Larson. That was a big time hit. On the roll. Satterfield. Rolls to his left. That right handed quarterback throwing back across his body. Look at that hit by Shannon Morrison. But I tell you what, Clyde Everett does a heck of a job of hanging on. Big hit, better catch. First and 10, Appalachian at the Marshall 44. Apps driving, trailing 7 3. Hooks. Very little. Brought down shy of the Marshall 40 yard line. Poster green jerseys around the football, including Byron Turner and Vince Parker. Here's a good look at Brian Stump and Roger Johnson. Very, very active. The Marshall linebackers. Four wide receivers this time as Satterfield operates from the shotgun. Fake the blitz. Just rushing four. Across the middle. Pass is caught. That's hooks. He's dragged down by Roger Johnson, but not before he reaches the Marshall 18. That's a gain of 23. Hooks runs a little circle route out of the backfield. Ah, there it is from the shotgun. Satterfield sets his feet. There you can see Hooks leaking from the line of scrimmage. Actually, right down the middle of the field. Kind of a flare around. Good throw and a good catch. You know, this Appalachian State offensive group has been putting up points in bunches this year. They've set a school record by scoring 30 or more points in five consecutive games. And they're inside the red zone with a first down. First and 10 at the Marshall 18. Satterfield quarterback draw. Slip momentarily into the open. Inside the 10. Five out of bounds. At the three, it's first and goal for App. From the shotgun, Satterfield actually slipped. The coaches say he's got excellent speed. He shows it here. That's a quarterback draw all the way. Satterfield gets his hand on the ground to get his balance. And you can see that four or five speed. Takes it down to about the two. The apps are knocking on the door again. Scott Satterfield, the reason. First and goal for Appalachian just outside the two yard line. Full house backfield this time. Satterfield on Keeps the keeper. The wants the throw to the back of the end zone. Incomplete. The pass was intended for the tight end John McPaul. John Duncan forced Satterfield to throw it before he wanted to. Looked like they had something going. So Marshall showed their jumbo look in nearly the same situation. Hit Danny White for the tight end. App does nearly the same thing, but misfires. Maybe they're trying to copy one another here offensively. But you mentioned almost the exact same way. Dual tight ends again. Full house backfield. Satterfield under center. Crossway pitch back to Scott. Yes, touchdown Appalachian State. And the Apps are in the lead. Sweep back into the boundary. Turns it back up inside. Damon Scott. He's a fullback who runs like a tailback. Is able to get in for six big ones. Sutton is on to add the extra point. Alan Gwynn is the holder. Yes. And the Appalachian State Mountaineers take the lead on the Marshall Thundering Herd, 10 to 7. Sunny for the first time all season. Marshall's coming back. Don't know how they act. And we'll see real, real soon how they react. Here's a power look down on the goal line. Toss sweep. That fullback playing the tailback position. And Damon Scott gets it in the end zone. They are awfully high on this young man, Damon Scott. He looks the part, too. Scott with his fourth rushing touchdown of the year, none bigger than the one he just put over the goal line. 
That puts the ASU Mountaineers on top, 10 to 7. Mickey Matthews and the herd concerned. 11 play drive, 80 yards in four and a half minutes. So the thundering herd is behind for the first time this season. We'll see how they react in the final five minutes of the first half. Marshall broke on top late in the first period. A three yards touchdown. Hook up Todd Donnan to tight end Danny White. But in the second period, Jay Sutton for Appalachian with a 41 yard field goal. And Damon Scott, a two yard touchdown run. And the Mountaineers lead Marshall 10 7. David, when you're the number one team in the country, you got to play on the road and win. And you got to come from behind and win. And they're going to have to do those two things here tonight if they're going to get a W. Eric Thomas from the five. And he is brought down shy of the 20-yard line. And right now, everything's going Appalachian's way. You're talking about being stirred up. Emotion, excitement. The app's got a whole bunch of it. Well, Appalachian's making the most of it, aren't they? Thus far. But we got a long way to go. They have not played a night game at Kid Brewer since 1985. They have not lost a night game here since 1977. And they lead Marshall 10-7. Parker to the 23-yard line. Three yards, but they were a tough three. And again, the app's the app got six on the line of scrimmage. Impressive drive for Appalachian. Marshall knew they'd face a real test here tonight. I'm talking about on both sides of the ball. Second down and eight. Well, they got ten up there on the line of scrimmage now. And here they come. Donnan is able to get the ball away, and Brian Reed makes a, a diving catch, but for minimal yardage, just across the 25, it'll be third down and a long four. Well, that big blitz coming. Todd Donnan had to get rid of the football before he wanted to. As I say, they were 10 on the line of scrimmage. He fakes the toss sweep here. The only thing he can do is just get it out there. Reed makes a heck of a catch. Third and about five. Marshall coming off a big home win over Western Carolina, 38-14. Appalachian, a loser at Georgia Southern last week, 34-31. Shotgun. Nowhere Don to go. Donnan steps up. Can he make the marker? Yes, he's got the first down. Takes it to the 32-yard line for a gain of seven and a fresh set of downs. Not the fastest guy in the world or the quickest. But you know, you get pretty fast when Dexter Coakley is chasing you. Well, that increases your speed. <laughs> Tell you what, Todd Donnan's sneaky fast is what he is. Very, very effective. Does whatever it takes from the gun. Excellent coverage. Goes to throw, just pulls it down. He knows where those chains are. Goes just far enough to pick up the first. Option. Ball is loose. Ball's on the turf, down. And Appalachian's got it. William Peebles with the recovery. Appalachian had great penetration on that option attempt by the herd. Donnan coughs it up. It's Marshall's third turnover of the first half. And App looking to build on a 10-7 lead. Again, that reverse option. We've not seen it this year. Kind of a surprise move for the Marshall offense. The ball's on the ground. Hard to tell from that angle why it was on the ground, but it was down there. And the apps come up with it. Three minutes, four seconds to go first half. Turnovers have been key here early. The herd has turned it over a bunch. Satterfield, short drop, swings it out of the backfield. The pass is complete to the fullback. Scott takes it down to the 19-yard line. It's a gain of seven. Vince Parker there on the stop. Along with Jason Grayson. But not before they pick up eight yards. The apps right now are playing pitch and catch and keeping the Marshall defense off balance. 
Marshall trying to become only the third team in Thundering Herd history to go 8 and 0. They did so in 1919 and 1987, but Appalachian is giving the herd its best shot right now. Speed option. Satterfield tucks it under. First down to the 14. Again, they're trying to run the speed option back into the boundary, away from the wide side of the field. Marshall being a man short into the boundary. What a mix here offensively. Rob Bess, Appalachian's offensive coordinator. Tell you what, right now he's got Marshall's defense on her heels. First down and 10. Appalachian at the Marshall 15. Check at the line of scrimmage. Flag is Flag down. down. I think there's going to be some movement. You can't have it, man. You can't have the state. On the offense. That would cost him five. Dead ball. False start. On the offense. Still first down. That's a critical mistake in a, in a practically penalty free first half. Boy, and Satterfield's got the hot hand. Last week against Georgia Southern, he was 20 of 32 for three touchdowns and 287 yards, and he also rushed the football a dozen times for 64 yards. And he's got this App State offense clicking now. First and 15. On the sprint. Nowhere to go. And he's going to send that ball out of bounds. The closest receiver was Shannon Morrison, but he was wearing a white jersey. He just got rid of the football. That was a heads up play. Satterfield sprints, looking to throw. Excellent coverage in the Marshall secondary, just throws it out of bounds. Saw big John Duncan right in front of him and sailed it out of bounds. Shannon Morrison tried to make the interception attempt, couldn't do it. On the gun. A minute 39 to go, first half, second down and 15. Marshall on a blitz. Here they come. In and hit. out of the hands of his intended receiver. For Appalachian, that was Nate Abraham. Couldn't make the grab, and Marshall really brought the rush that time. Satterfield was lucky to get that ball away. Brought the heat that time. Bring a couple of extra ones. The apps were unable to pick it up. Satterfield had to throw it before he wanted to. So after the Todd Dunn and fumble, the Herd's third turnover of the first half, the Marshall defense has been strong, not giving an inch. It's third and 15. 135 left here in the first half, David. Four wide receivers for Satterfield this time. Third and long. Satterfield going and to the end zone. zone, and his intended receiver fell, fell down. down. Clyde Everett fell down, and it's fourth and long, and a flag is down. Well, the Aps wanted a call. I don't see a flag, David. And there's a penalty, a holding penalty, pending against Appalachian. I thought right there where the receiver went down, uh, I was looking for a flag there, but he just slipped down. This would be an interesting call. Do you take the penalty and take him out of field goal range? I don't know. I don't have to make that call anymore. Coach Allen does. <laughs> Well, it looks like Marshall's going to take the penalty because the spot of the foul is going to be the 28. And this would take him out of field goal range. Holding on the offense. Still third down. Third to bunch. Appalachian needs the five-yard line to pick up the first down. The line of scrimmage is now the 37-yard line, so it's going to be third and 32. A minute 28 to go, first half. Appalachian has one timeout remaining. Marshall in a two deep zone with the nickel packets, the extra defensive back. The apps from the shotgun. Cohen with the middle rush. They're setting up the screen. Scott makes a great over the shoulder catch, but can't get away from the linebackers. First stump and then Embry. He's down. It's going to be fourth down. And Appalachian will have to punt. So the Marshall defense comes up big here as the apps were looking to put this one away. Or if not put it away, get the upper hand here in the first half. Little screen. And as you mentioned, the apps are forced to put it away. 
Well, if you remember, Gwynn's first attempt was out of sight, 59 yards and no return. Roger Johnson is set to receive the kick at the 10 yard line, but you can bet that Gwynn will be opting for the coffin corner here with only 49 seconds to go on a running clock. Or a little pooch. Marshall has one timeout remaining. They're opting not to use it right now. They'll take that five. That way, Quinn can just loosen up his leg a little bit more. Actually, this is just a belt. It's going to cost him five. The folks in green are on their hands right now. Fourth down and 41, and while we have a moment, we want to remind you that announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by Marshall University. Any use rebroadcast or other transmission without the written consent of Marshall University and Creative Productions is prohibited. A high sailing kick that Johnson will get away from. And what a terrific punt. Now at about the two-yard line. That's a 39-yard punt, no return. Marshall's got the ball at their own two-yard line with only 11 seconds to go in the first half. And I would anticipate that Marshall is just going to concede the final 11 seconds and head back to the locker room. You got that right. There's a good look at Appalachian's defensive coordinator working overtime. Rough at McNeil. Tell you what, you got a great philosophy. Ball comes, you come. Ball goes away, you go away. When you tackle him, hit him from the tongue up. <laughs> That's how he teaches his kids. Quarterback snake. And that is going to do it for the first half. And so the Appalachian State Mountaineers head back to the facilities building, leading top ranked Marshall 10 7. First time all year long, the Thundering Herd has trailed. Our Mark Martin is down on the field. And we hope to have a word with a coach in just a moment. But a, a Marshall football team plagued by turnovers, three of them, in fact, in the first two periods of play. That's been the difference in the football game. Yeah, it just definitely plainly has. They will head back to the locker room and try to talk about taking care of the football. Todd Donnan with an interception. Chris Parker with a fumble. Let's head down to the sidelines. What's up, Mark? All right, Jerry, uh, well, you're the first uh, coach and team to lead Marshall this season. You have to be pleased with the way your team's playing. First, talk about the touchdown drive to put your team ahead. Well, we did the things that we practiced that we thought we could do. We'd watched a lot of tape on them, obviously, and I thought it was a good drive. We just need to be consistent with drives like that in the second half. It's going to be important to keep the football. Okay, raining, great crowd here, and uh, definitely momentum on your side right now. Well, it's a great atmosphere for college football. I'm sorry about the rain. We can't do anything about that, but I think Southern Conference speaks for itself. And there's always been a great rivalry with Marshall and Appalachian and some of the other schools also. But this is just really speaks well for one double-A football out there. Have a good break here and good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, Jerry Moore, head coach of the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Let's go back upstairs to Dave and Sonny. All right, Mark, thank you very much. We look forward to your halftime activities coming up. We're at the break. Appalachian State gunning for the upset. Leads top-ranked Marshall 10-7. Well, it's halftime at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina, and the Appalachian State Mountaineers, who came into play tonight, four and two, leads top-ranked and undefeated Marshall, 10 to seven. Dave Weekly, along with Sonny Randall, here at halftime, and Sonny, keys to the first half of play has to be those three Marshall turnovers and Appalachian's ability to stop Marshall's running game. Well, David, we thought this was going to be a heck of a football game, and I'll tell you what, it's everything we thought it would be. But turnovers has been the name of the game here in the first half. Marshall has just shot itself in the foot. They've got to hold on to the football game if they're going to be in it in the second half. It's a cold, rainy night here in Boone. Intermittent showers. The field is very wet and very slippery. What kind of an effect has that had on the game tonight thus far? Well, I don't think you can blame it on the field or you can blame it on the ball. You have to hold on to it. And I tell you, normally a Chris Parker, he doesn't leave it on the ground. But he has this evening turnovers they absolutely kill you right now the number one team in the nation has to go in there and regroup come out take advantage of what Appalachia is doing defensively and I think they're going to be able to do that but the apps I'll tell you you look at their football team they lost twice 
by only five points, and they lost a heartbreak in the Wake Forest. So Marshall knew they'd have their hands full. I don't think the apps have disappointed them in one little bit here in the first half. Well, Jerry Moore said this week that he felt he wasn't going to put Marshall University on a pedestal, that they were going to play Marshall like they were any other team, and that's what they're doing right now, playing very sound, fundamental, hard-hitting, defensive-minded football, and it's working. Well, they knew coming in that Marshall had a heck of a fine football team. They respected them, but I tell you what, they didn't look at them at all. They said they're at our house. We got a lot going for us. We're going to play it to the hill, and they've done just that here in the first half. Well, it stopped raining momentarily, and that's good news for Mark Martin because he has our halftime report next. From Kid Brewer Stadium, you can see the fog, but Appalachian State leads the way 10-7. It's a rainy night in beautiful Boone, North Carolina, but a great college football atmosphere unfolding, Southern Conference style, Marshall and Appalachian State. And at halftime, the homestanding Mountaineers leading it by a count of 10-7 over the top-ranked team in 1AA football. And welcome back, everybody, here to Kid Brewer Stadium. I'm Mark Martin. Glad you could be with us. Marshall getting on the board first in this football game as Danny White catches a touchdown pass from Todd Donnan. Then Jay Sutton puts the Mountaineers on the board with a field goal, and then the touchdown by Appalachian State. Damon Scott a two-yard run and at the break the Mountaineers with the first lead of the season over the thundering herd. A pleasure to be joined here at halftime by the athletic director at Appalachian State University Mr. Rachel Laney and uh, always good to see you and a uh, great atmosphere here tonight so first of all let me commend you on that. I know it's something you've been uh, looking forward to. Yes it is and we'd like to say a special thank you to Sports South for the production tonight of putting this game on. We're just pleased for the atmosphere. This is good college football. First night game since 1985 and the Mountaineers haven't in fact lost a night game since 1977 so uh, uh, kind of atmosphere here you might have some more night games before it's all said and done huh? We would like to we'd rather play them early in the year once we get into this time of the season we're not sure what the weather's going to do but you know it's a good night tonight it's a little damp but we've had great turnout from our fans and I must commend Marshall and their supporters they've come out in numbers and that's what it's about to get behind a team to travel and in bad weather still come out and show that support. What's your thoughts on the football game right now pretty good game oh it's going to be a great second half you know for marshall and their tradition their number one ranking they're going to come out and be fired up our kids love to play in the black uniform so we're going to defend our goal line and try to put more points on the board this is indeed a beautiful campus rochel and uh, this stadium uh, has a great uh, charm to it and uh, this time next year it's going to have a bit of a facelift oh very much so we'll be replacing our synthetic uh, surface we'll be also re uh, doing our track and we'll also be redoing our lower section of the sand stands on both sides. So we got about a $3 million project that will begin late spring that will be ready by next fall. All right, Rochel, always a pleasure uh, spending time with you and enjoy this second half. Great seeing you tonight. Thank you all. Right. Rachel Laney, the athletic director here at Appalachian State University, and at halftime, the Mountaineers are leading the thundering herd of Marshall by a score of 10-7. Much more to come here from Boone, North Carolina. We'll be back in just a moment. Appalachian 10, Marshall 7. Mark Martin has the coach of the thundering herd. Mark. All right, thanks, Dave. Jim, at halftime, your team trailing for the first time this season. Let's just talk about uh, what was discussed at halftime. Well, we got to make some adjustments uh, from the standpoint we've got some guys out. First three receivers aren't even playing now. It's no excuse, but we got to find a way to win. You got to give Appy credit. They made some good plays. I'm real proud of our defense because we've turned the ball over. We're doing some things uh, that we don't usually do, but uh, same point, uh, we, we've made some adjustments and we got a dog fight in, but you know, we're going to come out here and play hard. All right, have a good second half, Jim, and let's go back upstairs to Dave Weekly and Sonny Randall. All right, Mark, thank you very much. And Boy, that was some hat he had on, wasn't it? I tell you, he ought to wear that all the time. Uh, I, I dared him to wear that hat for that interview with Jeff Dunn in a moment ago. <laughs> Good job, Mark. Let's take a look at highlights from the first half of action. Not a lot of scoring, so let's get a look at it. Todd Donnan from a power set with a flip to Danny White. Danny White lays out the end zone. Makes a heck of a dive and catch. Big Danny White. And on this foggy night at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina, Jay Sutton somehow negotiated this 41-yard field goal. Watch the ball. A knuckler. Can't get much closer to that. That put App on the board early in the second period. And then App took the lead. Toss sweep. Damon Scott into the boundary. Scott cuts back. 
Stump makes a stop, but Scott gets in the end zone. He cracks over, and that's where we stand. 10 to 7. Both teams have returned to the field. Appalachian will get the ball first. And this is a scary notion for Marshall fans, Sonny. The last 60 times that Appalachian has led at halftime, they've won 53 of those games. So they know what to do here in Boone when they get the lead. We talked about it before. Boone's an awful tough place to play. Don Blue and Jamie Coleman set to receive the kick. Stats from the first half, not a lot of offense. Maybe the biggest stat, Sonny, the three Marshall turnovers. turnovers. That's been the story of the first half. Any way you cut it. Also, Appalachian holding Marshall to just 49 rushing yards in the first half, a big factor. Chris Parker for Marshall, 15 carries and 54 yards. With the frog rolling in here, we might not get home till about Tuesday. I was going to say. Hey, but we're glad to stay through the final gun of this one. We think we've got a great one. We are hope you're enjoying the game at home. Cold and rainy. Typical Boone weather for late October. An open lander gets the foot into it. And Coleman will take it for the six. And he is brought down at the 27-yard line. And the Marshall injury list got a little longer in the first half. Larry McLeod, the redshirt freshman linebacker from Huntington Buffalo Wayne High School, broke his hand. We don't know if he's going to be able to return. And Marshall has lost uh, two real fine receivers and possibly a third. So Scott Satterfield, 5 of 11 for 46 yards passing in the first half, leads the Mountaineer attack. First and 10 from the 27. And they go to Hooks. And Hooks is smacked to the turf at the 30-yard line. Vince Parker upended him. The fine linebacker from Chicago, place for Marshall. Boy, hey, boy he, he landed one right underneath the Hooks' his chops. The fog is really beginning to roll in here now. Just over the last 10 minutes or so, it's got considerably darker. Second and seven. Three wide receivers. Satterfield across the middle of the pass is caught. That's Hooks. He's into Marshall territory. Dragged down from behind by Bryant Stump, but not before he reaches the herd. 45. It's a gain of 25. Marshall only rushed four, covered with seven. Had Stump covering Hooks out of the backfield. That's a little bit of a mismatch. You get the ball in Hooks' hands, a little fan route. Here you see Brian Stump trying to run him down. Not the fastest running back around, but elusive. And the senior from Decatur, Georgia, will join John Settle as being the only other runner at App to ever lead this team in rushing four consecutive years. Two deep zone. And here he comes again, trying the middle of the field. Some daylight down to the Marshall 38. And Sonny, how many times have you told me that the first possession of the third quarter oftentimes is the biggest of the game, and App right now is on the move trying to build on a three-point lead? I've said so often, Dave. It sets the tone for the second half. And the Apps have come out smoking. As you see Chip Hooks run up in there for a pickup of seven. Right now, the Marshall defense is a little bit on their heels. Pick up some heat. From the eye this time, Scott and Hooks behind Satterfield. Blitz. Here comes Hooks. Tough running to the 35, and he's got a first down. Running a toss sweep. Marshall came on a blitz. The Apps were able to pick it up. Tell you what, on that Appy sideline, those folks are jacked. And the way they played here, you can understand why. Now Jerry Moore's got a three and two record at Appalachian against the Thundering Herd in the midst of his sixth season here in Boone. First and 10 from the Marshall 35. App from the shotgun this time. Four wide receivers. On a blitz. Here comes some heat. Gets it away. He and just Satter throws it out of bounds. Satterfield, you're exactly right, son. He just threw it away. <laughs> Marshall brought some heat. Satterfield had nowhere to go with the football from the shotgun. He knows he's dead. He just throws it out of bounds. 
Heads up play by the Appalachian quarterbacks. Well, Marshall's really going up against experienced quarterbacks tonight here at Appalachian. And Marshall's wins over Moorhead State, Georgia Southern, West Virginia State, and VMI. The herd faced freshman quarterbacks in the UTC game. Chad, uh, Jeff Peters was a sophomore. Satterfield looks pretty blitz. savvy tonight. Here comes the blitz. There's the pitch. Look out. And there goes the fullback, Damon Scott. All the way to the one-yard line. Inside the one, Damon Scott, a 34-yard gainer. Listen to the fan. On the option, Damon Scott. Looked like Marshall had it stopped. Speed option. Quick pitch to Damon Scott. Scott cuts it back. Looks like he was wrapped, wrapped up, but he cuts back across the grain. Here it's all Damon Scott. Roger Johnson saved the touchdown. Quarterback stakes. Satterfield. Touchdown. Touchdown, Appalachian State. Satterfield with his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. And yes, Sutton fires it through, and it's a 10-point Appalachian lead. Appalachian State fans celebrating in Boone. They lead the herd by 10. Well, the fog's rolling in. And the Appalachian State Mountaineers are rolling. They lead Marshall 17 to 7. I'll tell you one thing, if that first offensive drive is in the indicator, the Aps have got one thing in mind. To beat the number one 1 AA team in the country. That went out of bounds. And so Marshall will take it first and 10 at the 35-yard line, and that's probably the best thing that could happen in this situation for Marshall. Seven plays, 73 yards in two and a half minutes. Scott Satterfield dives in on the quarterback keeper for the touchdown. Big play in the drive had to be that 34-yard run by Damon Scott down to the one-yard line that set up the Satterfield touchdown. So Marshall trailing for the first time this season, now behind at by 10, 17-7. Still plenty of time to go in the game. 12-28 in the third. Well, we'll find out what the number one team in the country is made of. No question, though, Sonny, that Appalachian's got all the momentum right now. Oh, Bo has jumped all over Appalachian. Let's see if the herd can answer. Don in the pass on, on the swing. Down. Swings it out. Tried to Incomplete. get it to Parker. Incomplete. Too far in front of him. Nowhere to go with the football. Donna just dropped it off. Donna now 9 of 15. One touchdown, one interception thus far in the game. 85 passing yards. The apps are stirred up. Here they come. Second and 10, four wide receivers for Marshall. A little blitz. Quick handoff up the middle. And not a lot of running room for Parker. Takes it up near the 38-yard line. It's going to be third down and long. When a team blitzes, if you could just hit the line of scrimmage, once you break in, you could go a long ways. A lot of long looks over across the way. You can understand why. The head coach is awfully concerned. Brian Reed, Theron Todd, Sean Goodwin, and Mark Wicks is lined up as a wide receiver this time for the Thundering Herd, and we've got movement up front. That's going to cost the Herd five. And that's William Pinnell. The left tackle moving. It's going to cost Marshall five. Normally, you don't call his name in college. <laughs> five yards. Still He's third down. have a little poise and composure at this stage of things. If you're trying to come back, and that's what the herd is trying to do. Back it up, 
Well, this Marshall offensive line has been a big part of the Thundering Herd's success, limiting sacks, staying away from penalties. Third and 12 is a whole lot different than third and seven. Protection's good for Don, and across the middle, in and out of the hands of Sean Goodwin, and the Herd's going to have to punt. And that ball was thrown right on the money. You got to hold on. Listen to these app fans again. Standing ovation for their defense. Let's see if the apps try to come after it. Travis Colquitt's first punt, his only punt thus far tonight, traveled 54 yards. Don Blue is set to receive it. Oh, and it's another beauty. No fair catch for Blue. He'll take it at the 20. On the knee, that's it. Right at the 21. 11-17 to go, third quarter. Appalachian with the momentum, the ball, and a 10-point lead. The men in black. Appalachian State leads Marshall, 17-10, early third quarter. Satterfield, the Keeps keeper. Eric Claussen, the senior from Huntington, West Virginia, drags him down at the 20-yard line for a gain of three, second down and seven. Let's head down to the sidelines. What's up, Mark? Well, Dave, let's talk injuries, and most of them from Marshall's side of the field. You mentioned Larry McLeod out with a broken hand, will not return, promising young linebacker for this Marshall team. Also, Josh Seamster, a special teams player, shaken up right before the half, a jammed wrist, not sure whether he will return. Theron Todd is playing with a sore hamstring. He was in there on that last offensive series, but definitely not at 100%. All okay. right. All right, Mark, thank you. Nice open field tackle made by Shannon Morrison on chip hooks at the 33-yard line. It's going to be third and five. You said it, David, in the open field. A tackle like that has big time written all over it. Shannon Morrison made a heck of a play. Shannon Morrison with a big play there. And, of course, in the first half, he had a big, a big play throwing out of punt formation. Here's the option. Satterfield pitches to hooks. Shannon Morrison makes the stop. And now the Marshall fans getting into it, coming to their feet across the way. Third down and five for Appalachia. Here comes the Balls, Balls loose on the, on the turf. Satter got Satterfield got it back. And bring up fourth. So Satterfield fumbles the snap from the sophomore center, Scott Cadlove. Cadlove. Moved to center after starting his career here at App as a guard and is really the strongest member of that App offensive line. But they miss fire on the handoff. And now Gwynn will punt for the third time tonight. Yeah, and another he good it, kick. I mean, he knocked it out of sight. Roger Johnson at the 27. Boy, he is pounding. And that ball is loose. Marshall has it back. Nine, 19 to go, third quarter. It's a foggy night in Boone. Marshall's got the ball, but they trail by 10. Well, those app fans having it their way thus far, but still a long time to go. Alan Gwynn officially 53 yards on the punt and a seven yard return by Roger Johnson. Marshall has the ball first and 10 at their own 30. Marshall hasn't scored since late in the first period. App has scored 17 consecutive points. Here comes Parker, the bread and butter man, to the 31-yard line, and Appalachian continues to handle the run of the Thundering Herd very well. They have five on the line of scrimmage, David. Seeing some dealing, some stunting. We've got Parker unofficially 18 carries for 60 yards. That's a big turnaround from last week when he carried the ball 35 times for 180 yards and three touchdowns against Western Carolina. From the shotgun, now they're going to play their 4-3. Rush four, cover with seven. Rolling pocket, Donnan. Oh, and almost it, picked off. The pass was nearly picked off in front of the app bench intended for Brian Reed. And it was Johnny, Johnny Smith. Smith, the free safety, nearly got it. Awfully tough for a right-handed quarterback to roll to his left and throw the ball back across his body, which Todd Donner is having to do right now. Ooh. 
Johnny Smith was Johnny on the spot. And as you indicated, almost picked it off. If you're a right-hander, you really like to be going to your right. You can get a lot more on the ball. But the play was not designed to go to the right. Marshall looks good statistically on third down conversion, 7 of 11. Good protection for Don and set yes. the ball in there. First down to midfield, Theron Todd. 19-yard gain for Theron Todd up to midfield. And Theron Todd's limping just a little bit. But he pulled a hamstring or strain one early in the week. Good protection. Todd Donnan. Pretty good hole. Theron Todd finds it and finds a first down. Donnan with a little zip on that ball. Stepped up and gunned it for a 19-yard gain to Theron Todd. Apps tried to cover that time and just rushed with four. Now they'll bring five and possibly six. Coakley all over Donnan. Really let him have it as he released the football incomplete. Dexter Coakley is some kind of football player. We said before the game he was the real deal. They talk about him being the best athlete in Appalachian history. That's <laughs> saying a mouthful, but he might just be. Boy, you can see right here with him draped all over you. Todd Downing cannot throw the football. Coakley with six and a half sacks thus far this season nearly had another. Second and ten. Parker's the lone setback. Apps fake the blitz. Todd down and checks. Parker takes it down near the 46 yard line. Stopped me by Larry Dennis from Palatine, Illinois. Depending on how many Todd Donnan sees in the box, he counts them and he'll call the play accordingly. Here it is, he had checked. Hand back to Parker. Not getting a whole lot of folks knocked down up front. Well, on their last third down, Donnan found Theron Todd for a 19-yard gainer. It's third and seven from the app 47. Shotgun. Protection's good for Don and swings it out to Sean Goodwin incomplete. A little bit overthrown. Intended for Sean Goodwin. Just a little bit out of his reach. And Marshall's gonna punt. Goodwin had a step on the strong safety, Jamie Coleman, but the pass was just too far in front. And the Apps defense again comes up strong. Both outside people covered by Appalachian. So Marshall will punt the ball. Colquitt just got it away. Sails it down inside oh, the five. What a kick. At the four. They'll mark it at the four. Travis Colquitt, what a punt. And That's you cannot believe how close that was to get blocked. It was nearly blocked, but Colquitt got it away. A 43-yarder, no is. return. Watch out close. Right there. Great form and a follow-through, just like a golfer. And it goes out on the four. So Appalachian, no turnovers thus far tonight. Backed up in the shadow of their own end zone. They've got a 10-point lead, a first and 10 at their own four. Hooks across the five. Maybe a couple. Up to about the eight-yard line, possibly the nine. And a little extra curricular activity downfield, but no flags. Well, this is always a hard-hitting game between these two teams. <laughs> these people get after it, boy. There's no love lost. Appalachians had the reputation for many, many years of being one of the most physical teams in the Southern Conference. They're like the Pittsburgh Steelers used to be. But you know, this year they've really been able to produce more big plays. They, they've really moved the ball offensively better than ever. And their defense is playing awfully well. Ball was nearly loose. Flagged out. Flag is down center field. Across the 10 up to the 11 yard line. We'll have to check the penalty. That's going to be a hold, I believe. That's a hold. It. I believe center field lost the ball momentarily. Well, I think he was surprised by the ball. Didn't know what to do with it. 
But when the umpire throws it flag, you know it's a hole. Holding on the offense. Half the distance to go. Still second down. If you're Appalachian, you got to be awfully carefully down, down, awful careful down here. Line of, the line of scrimmage, Sonny, is now the three-yard line. Good look at Coach Moore. What a job he's done it here at Appalachian State. Jerry Moore, class act. Mountaineers need to go just shy of the 15 to pick up the first down. And I believe the clock is on the blink. The official wanted a little conference with the uh, referee, Mr. Bender. Now we're straight. Marshall short blitz. Here they come. Satterfield, the keeper, dragged down. Brian Stump. That was just a quarterback keep. And B.J. Cohen. Tried to sprint on the corner. Stump and Cohen would have none of it. This is a quarterback keep all the way. Cohen will not be blocked. That was a strong play by Cohen. Youth is served. He's a true freshman. And Brian Stump. Sophomore from Grantsville, West Virginia. And look, I think we got a quick kick coming here, Sonny. I don't think they've taken any chances here. They want to get it out of there. But you've got to get a lamp out there. Now Marshall wants to change. And they ain't Marshall's got to call a timeout. timeout. They couldn't get him on, get him off in time. That looked like a jailbreak. <laughs> Talking about playing chess. Well, so far tonight, Appalachian Sonny has just been a little quicker to the punch. And Jerry Moore wanted to go for the quick kick there. Marshall could not get the right people on the field. They had to burn a timeout. Well, Appalachian couldn't get the right folks out there either. <laughs> so, so they offset each other. But Marshall trailing by 10, 531 to go, third quarter. You never know. Jim Donnan may wish he had that timeout later on down the line. Well, Bill Curry under fire in Lexington. And Ray Goff is in the fire in Athens. Kentucky oh. with the lead. USC all over the Cal Bears second quarter. Western Kentucky trailing Southern Illinois in the third. Oh, big one for the uh, Terps. Maryland leading the Ramblin' Wreck by 11. East Carolina coming on, leading the Golden Hurricane. Well, I guess uh, Appalachian did not want to take any chances on third down. They're punting out of there. Yep, they're going to punt anyway. On third down and 11, the line of scrimmage is the three. Marshall should get great field position. Not a good punt. Terrific punt. Johnson backed up to the Marshall 47. Got some room. Wants to get to the outside. Flag is down. That's going to be a big one. Oh, he tried to get to the wall. And I'm afraid we got one in the back or a clip. I think Roger Johnson would have been better off just heading up straight, straight up field, but it's a lot easier to see up here. He wanted to get to the wall. We got a hole. And instead of that good field position. So it's a holding penalty that's going to push the football back to the 38-yard line. That was a 49-yard punt by Alan Gwynn, and he's really been a weapon tonight. He's not making anybody forget about Harold Alexander, though, here in Boone. He is Travis Colquitt. <laughs> yeah, both the punters have a terrific night. And Sonny, uh, you remarked in the break, uh, the fog has cleared up considerably here. Not a checking. It was pea soup time about 15 minutes ago. Toss sweep. Here comes Parker. Can he get to the outside? Flag is down. Across the 40 to the 41-yard line, but this one will come back. I think we'll have another hole. Marsha would like to get Parker on the corner if they can. You can hook the linebacker, but you can't hold him. Or defensive end, whichever it was. 
So Marshall misfiring a bit here. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, still first down. Moments ago, Appalachian was at their own three yard line. Now Marshall has the football at their own 29. And it's first down and 20. Holding penalties on consecutive plays have really saddled the herd. It's getting late, third quarter, counting down to the five minute mark. Appalachian State 17, Marshall 7. Apps coming on the blitz. Oh, nowhere to go. From the backside, Todd Dada did not have a chance. Di Bernardo cracked the Marshall senior quarterback down. Di Bernardo has been some kind of football player. 50 will not no, be no. blocked. Check it. That's the free safety, Johnny Smith. He had a zero there. Johnny Smith from the second day, safety blitz. Todd Donna did not have a chance for Marshall. Well, it's second down and about halfway to Wilkesboro. Second down and 29. Marshall at their own 20. You'd like to get some of it back, but not all of it at one time. Donnan steps up. He's got a lot of room to run. And I tell you, he gets a whole bunch of it back. Pops out of bounds at the 38-yard line. That's an 18-yard gainer. They cover the field. Todd Donnan, excellent coverage in the App Appalachian secondary. He just pulls it down. Todd Donnan goes all the way to the markers. It'll be third and about 10. Boy, Sean Elliott nearly had Donnan. But Todd Donnan was able to scamper away and pick up a lot of yards, but it's still third and long. It's going to be third down and 10. Marshall needs midfield to keep this drive going. Clock ticking down, about four seconds. Get him, get him. Protection's good for Donnan. Pass in and out of the hands of Brian Reed. He had the first down at the app 45, but couldn't hold it. You cannot throw the ball any better. A deep spread route. You've got to hold on to those guys. Here it is. Todd Donnan. I'm talking about on the money. In and out of the hands of Reed. You got to catch those guys. So Colquitt will punt. And Don Blue is set to return it at the app 19. Flag down. Pretty good punt. Blue. Got oh, away from let it. Let it go. This let one is going to go inside the five, but will it come back? The flag is down. Let's see what the call is. That's a 56 yard punt with no return. And when it goes oh, bad, it goes it, off. Of it really goes bad. Either movement or illegal precision. Boy, I'll tell you what, Mickey Matthews, the defensive coordinator for Marshall, is going crazy. He better be careful. Yes, sir. He doesn't want 15. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He sure didn't like get called even a little bit. So instead of having Appalachian pinned back at the five-yard line after a terrific punt. On the kicking punt, team, too many men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Colquitt will come on and punt again. Count them. I see three in the backfield. County. He got another one. Oh, it's another one. Knocked it out of sight. Turns over. Blue from the 17. Swarmed under. Great coverage. But that five yard penalty cost Marshall about a dozen yards. Apps got it. At the 17. Let's head downstairs for Mark. What's up? Well, Dave, it's an exciting football game here in Boone, North Carolina, and Tom Apke is excited, but he's also excited because 
basketball season has started at least practice wise. Yeah we were able to begin our college basketball practice October 15th this year and so for all of us uh, in the basketball world it's a fun time to be coaching. You got a big time schedule this year. Yeah we do. I think the whole Southern Conference has really upped everybody's non-conference schedule. Last year we pulled some big upsets from our conference around uh, uh, the country and we're hoping we're going to be able to do that again. It should really be an exciting December all around our conference. All right, and you got uh, your top two scorers back, so that always makes a coach happy. Yeah, we're optimistic. Uh, Chad McClendon, William Cook, our two leading scorers last year, both back. Uh, should be a lot of fun for us. All right, great. Good luck this season. Great seeing you. Thank you. All right, let's go back to Dave and Sonny. All right, thanks, Mark, and thanks, Tom Apke. Second down and seven. No pressure on those round ballers right now. Three step drop. Oh, from the backside. Guess who? BJ Cohen. Georgia connection. Cohen with sack number nine on the year. From the blind side. Scott Satterfield. Got his pads damaged a little bit. Here's a look. Look at Cohen. Oh, for the quarterback. No quarterback wants that shot from the blind side. Big play defensive end for Marshall. Now the folks at Marshall across the way are getting all stirred up. 220 and counting, third quarter. Marshall trails by 10. That faces a third and 11 from the 19. From the gun. Quarterback draw. Nowhere to go. And he runs directly into the arms of Jerome Embry. So the Marshall uh, defense gets an outstanding ovation as they go across the way. Here it is, quarterback draw. Not even thinking about uh, throwing the football. Satterfield has nowhere to go with it. So Gwen has been firing rockets off his foot. Let's see what happens here. Semi-rocket. Johnson gets away from it. It's going out at the 50. And Marshall's going to have it at midfield. That's good field position for the Thundering Herd. Marshall trails only by 10, but it's time for the Thundering Herd to get something going offensively. Appalachian has shut down the Thundering Herd run here in the third quarter. But Marshall's just been saddled by a lot of penalties, mistakes. And a, and a lot of drop balls, I might add. 38-yard punt, no return. You've got to hang on as a receiver. Parker looking for a hole. Nowhere to go. Gets into app territory, but not much more. Maybe the 48. I'm telling you, David, defensively, Appalachian is making Marshall want to throw the football. They say if you can beat us, beat us in the air. You're not going to beat us with that big back. They won the battle up front here tonight. Inside of a minute to go, third quarter. Give Parker a gain of only a yard. Four wide receivers from the shotgun this time. He's flushed. Parker's open. Oh, by Parker, the ball hit him right in the hands. And I'm telling you, David, it looked like he would go the distance. Todd Donnan. Looked like he was going to run with the football. Saw Parker open. All he does is dump it off to him. Look for yourself. Todd Donnan pulls it down. Now a little dump off. Just a little dump. Parker, the ball just goes right through his hands. Chris Parker has not had a night that he wants to remember here at Boone thus far. Third and nine from the out 49. Donnan. Caught. Great throw and a great catch, Sean. No, they're going to rule it incomplete. It appeared as if the pass was going to stand and a late ruling incomplete. Here it is. He sets his feet. And he catches the ball. You see where he catches the ball and lays? No, it did hit the ground. That was a good call. Good call. That was an excellent call. It did hit the ground. Good call by the official. I was just getting ready to hammer him because I didn't think he could see it, but he saw the ball hit the ground. That was a great call. So after Marshall gets the football at midfield, it's another three and out. 
Low snap. Colquitt handles it. Oh, he hit another one. Boy, the I mean, it went downtown. One. That's in boom. Oh, my. He was not able to keep it out of the end zone. It will come out to the 20. 49-yard punt for the touchback. And so Appalachian will have it at the 20-yard line. I'm telling you what, we've got a whale of a football game. It was billed to be something special, and now all of a sudden we see a late flag. And Marshall's going to be called for an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. I'm not sure what happened. This was from some conversation that took place on the field. And that's 15. Well, I'll tell you what. I'd like to know what that one was. But the Marshall team was almost gathered around the officials, and all of a sudden, a real late flag came out. Had to be from something that was said. So moments ago, it looked like Melvin Cunningham was going to be able to down that ball inside the five-yard line. Instead, it's a touchback. Tack on 15 more for unsportsmanlike conduct. And Apps got the ball at the 35, a 10-point lead. And the Apps have spread the field. And Marshall's coming with five. Hooks, breaks away into Marshall territory to the 40-yard line. And again, in that coverage, you had Brian Stump, a linebacker, trying to cover back 101. Satterfield to Hooks for 25. And Satterfield gets it to Hooks. Hooks is able to break the tackle. Stump can't bring him down. Hooks is in the open field. Awfully tough for a linebacker to cover a back. Especially a back as good as Chip Hooks, and that's the end of the third. So the third quarter is in the books. The only scoring a Satterfield one-yard touchdown run. We're heading to the fourth. Appalachian 17, Marshall 7. Along with Sonny Randall and Mark Martin, Dave Weekly in Boone, North Carolina tonight, set to head to the fourth Appalachian with the ball, a 10-point lead. Following the 25-yard pass reception by Chip Hooks, Satterfield under center. On the roll. Sends it down the field. The pass is nearly intercepted by Jason Grayson at the end, in the end zone, intended for Kendrick Hall. Might have been intended for Hall, but Jason Grayson had a much better chance at it. Excellent coverage. He likes to roll. He sprints one way and rolls the other. Again, a right-handed quarterback thrown to his left. As you can see, the white jersey almost picked it off. There's some concern written all over. Second down and 10. Appalachian winning the battle of total yards. Speed option. Satterfield pitch to hooks. Across the 35. Very effective. To the 32. It'll be third down and a short three for Appalachian. A great mixture on offense. Here's the speed option. To the boundary. Satterfield pitches at the last split second. Stop has to be made from the secondary. Melvin Cunningham making the stop. Hooks uh, picks up about six. And as you mentioned, it's third three. Satterfield with not the greatest numbers, but he's been effective. Here it is again on the roll. Oh, he's got all kinds of trouble. But he may have the first down. No, sir, David, depending on the spot. That's going to be short. I don't know now. I thought he was right on the 30-yard line. I thought it was short. They're going to bring the chains across yes, and They'll measure. Like measure this one. Boy, Satterfield was running with white jerseys all around. Running for his life. A little whirly bird option here. He's going to keep it. Cohen makes him pitch, or almost makes him pitch. Stump makes it stop. They got a pretty good spot. Brian Stump up to make the stop. But not before Satterfield got very, very close to a first down. First down. Got a good spot there. I thought Satterfield was down at the 30. 
But the youngster gets a first down for the apps. 14 10 to go in the game. Appalachian with the ball, a 10 point lead. And doing what they want to do as far as controlling the football game, they knew they had to have a running game. Jerry Moore said that coming in, and they have been able to run it. From the shotgun. And here comes a blitz. Safety blitz. Nowhere to go with the football. Shannon Morrison put Satterfield on his backside, but he just threw it away. It's a play by Satterfield. As you mentioned, Morrison was all over him. He just threw the ball away. What a competitor Scott Satterfield is. Here he is. Shannon Morrison makes him throw it before he wants to throw it. The youngster can compete with the best of them. He's played well. Chip, chip. They're going to score. Wide receivers this time. Satterfield, the pitch. This time he pitched it out to Damon Scott, his fullback, who's bumped out of bounds. That's Shannon 27. Morrison again. That's well, an excellent play by Shannon Morrison. Sonny, if Appalachian State holds on here, we'll have another three-way tie atop the league standings. Here's a speed option. Satterfield pitches at the last split second. Shannon Morrison from his safety position makes a stop. Knocks Damon Scott out of bounds for very little gain. As you mentioned, there's going to be a crowd at the top of the Southern Conference standings. Marshall, Appalachian, and Western would all be tied for the lead. And Marshall's been the number one team in one double football since the preseason. They would fall from the top spot. He's sprinting and looking to throw. Satterfield, the pass. No out of good. bounds. Out of bounds. Otis Smith made the catch out of bounds. It'll be an interesting call whether it's field goal or a punt. We'll see what the App Brain Trust is going to do. That didn't take long. Yeah, they're going to punt. Here it is on the sprint. Satterfield gets the ball outside. Square out route. But not able to get his feet down in bad as Otis uh, Smith. No, they are going to go for a field goal. Fool me. A late decision. Quinn is the holder. Sutton already has a 41-yarder to this his is, credit. This is 44. On the way. No good. no good. Hooked, wide, it. Hooked it to the left. Wide to the left. Hooked it just a little bit. 13-31 to go. Appalachian's drive stalls with a missed field goal. The herd has it when we return. Welcome back to Boone. The rain has stopped, but so is Marshall's offense. Todd Donnan, the passing efficiency leader in the Southern Conference, hitting on just one of his last nine passes. Chris Parker tonight, 20 carries, but just for 65 yards. Blitz. Donnan, the pass is behind Brian Reed, could not hold it, separated from the football by Jamie Coleman. Coleman put a lick on Reed. Appalachian came on a blitz. Boy, I'll tell you what. Di Bernardo. Di Bernardo was right in Donnan's face. What a night Di Bernardo's had. Clock stop, 13 18 to go in the game. Marshall needs two scores, but first they've got to get a first down. Two deep zone, Appalachian. Donnan, incomplete. Near the marker. Pass was intended for Sean Goodwin. Folks on the Marshall sideline wanted a flag, didn't get one. That Tony was Perry, coverage. the junior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, had the coverage. So Donnan now won for his last 11. Well, I'll tell you what, Appalachian really mixing it up on defense. That time they went a two-deep zone. They rushed four, covered seven. The time before, they brought the blitz, really keeping the Marshall offense off balance. Perry made a heck of a play that time for the Apps. Four wide receivers, Donnan operating from the shotgun again. Now the blitz. Sends it down the field for Brian Reed, too tall. Reed actually stopped over there before he got to the sideline. He may have lost sight of the ball momentarily. Sonny, Jamie Coleman had the coverage, and it's three and out. And here comes Boltwood onto the field again. And the app folks are on their feet, cheering their defense. Their defense has been terrific. Don Blue back at the 30-yard line. <laughs> the 
Caps got the return on. Oh, this wasn't a good one. Turned out to be not too bad. Got a healthy roll off the side of his foot. No return. Ball's out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Twelve fifty-seven to go. Unbeaten Marshall looking for answers. App has their sights set on the upset. 17, Marshall 7. Chip Books, what a night. He's got 156 total yards thus far. 84 of those yards on the ground on 19 carries. First and 10 for the ASU Mountaineers at their 35. And here comes Chip Books again. And Owen, he is just leveled by B.J. Cohen at the line of scrimmage. He got some help, too. I didn't even see him after Cohen just smothered him up. Cohen smothered him up, but Will Edwards was at the bottom of the pile. All right, Sonny, you're a Marshall coach now. You're on the sidelines. You've got to get that ball back. You've got to gamble a little bit on defense. Nicky Matthews, I'm sure, will uh, take a chance or two here. You're looking for a big play. Second, if you're Marshall, you want a turnover. Second and 11, loss of a yard. Satterfield on the short drop across the middle. Oh, no. Took his eye off of it just for a split second. And Jermaine Swafford was able to separate the fullback, Damon Scott, from the football. It's third down and 11. Damon Scott had the football for a split second. Now the apps are looking at third and 11. A lot of time left, 12-15. Let's see if Marshall covers. But comes with a blitz. Five defensive backs in the game. Thomas Maxwell's checked in as the nickel back. Two deep zone. They're going to cover. Satterfield steps up, lets it fly. That'll be short of the first down. He makes a catch. But short of the first. That's Don Blue with the reception. Pretty good catch. But Apple have to punt. If the pass had been on the mark, Blue would have picked up the first down easily. Satterfield. Well, he's flushed just a little bit, buys some time. Gets it outside to Don Blue. And he comes up with about a yard short. That was a good catch. <laughs> Folks wearing the green, trying to get their herd excited. Hanging in. Alan Gwynn. What a night he's had. He's had some terrific punts tonight, including the best of the year for him, a 58-yarder. This ain't half bad. Roger Johnson cracked down at the 23-yard line. Boy, the special team for Appalachian have been really special here tonight. 11.20 to go. Marshall's got the football back. But they trail by 10. Marshall's got the football trailing by 10. 17-7, 11.20 to go in the game. Marshall's offense has been stymied here in the second half. The herd with only 35 offensive yards. Check. There's the handoff to Parker. And he gets a little bit of room for the first time in a while, but takes it up to only the 27-yard line. It's a gain of four. It's not in the rain again. Second and six. It's the first time we've seen two backs in the Marshall backfield for some time. Chris Gross at fullback. You can see Chris Barker dancing, keeping on his feet. Picks up maybe four. Marshall needs two scores to get back in this thing. Now from the gun. Going for all of it. Sending it down in the direction of Donald Cunningham. Incomplete. Donald Cunningham, former West Virginia High School sprint champion, but he couldn't catch up to that one. Just a fly pattern down the deep side, uh, far sideline. Tony Perry was covered. The defensive back, pretty good coverage. You notice tonight that Marshall really hasn't thrown too much to the other side, where Matt Stevens is one of the premier defensive backs in the Southern Conference. Well, they've tried to stay away from him, and for good reason. Third down and six. Don and across the middle, pass is caught for a Marshall first down. Theron Todd at the 39-yard line. A gain of a dozen. Theron Todd 
Continues to limp just a little bit. Holding the shoulder there from the shotgun. Todd Dallin on the money. Inside seam route by Todd. And they pick up the first down. And this young lady wants to know when they're going to get in the end zone. I'll tell you what, David. Coming in, they knew and we knew that uh, Mark would not play the top receiver in the Southern Conference. They'd only lost Ricky Carter, their two top receivers. Dunn has all kinds of time. The pass is Looks caught. Like caught. Caught for a first down. Sean Goodwin at the Appalachian 48. It's another Marshall first down, a gain of 13. And having lost their two best receivers, the Apps knew that Marshall had to run the football. They have stopped the run and forced them to throw the ball. We thought one of those youngsters would stand tall, but they haven't thus far. But this is a heck of a throw, a heck of a catch. And the change move. Marshall's been sputtering offensively throughout the second half, but the herd sticks two first downs back to back, and they're on the yappy side of the 50. App show blitz. Donnan over the middle. That oh. might draw a flag, yes, sir. Yeah, flag's coming down. It was late. But Theron Todd was interfered with. App defensive back got there a little early. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul. First down. App defensive back just a little early. Marshall needs a touchdown and a field goal to get even. And if you're thinking field goal at this point, Tim Openlander, six of seven on the year, six in a row converted. Got to be, got to be thinking six here, David, I think, early. But you're just trying to set it up in case they need the field goal later on. Marshall with more penalty yards than the apps. ASU leading the Southern Conference coming into action tonight, averaging more than 80 yards a game in penalties. The Mountaineers have been strong in that department. That clock ran out too much time. Todd Donner wanted to check. Ran out of time. Was trying to get his team in the right, right formation and the right play, having the right play call. Cost him five. Now he's got the call. Well, Marshall tonight, Sonny, has definitely not been as sharp as we've seen them in recent games. But Appalachians had an awful lot to do with that. Well, you, you said that uh, exactly right, David. Donnan to put it up first and 15. Nowhere to go. Flushes out. Still nowhere to go. Boy, that's a big loss. That is a big, big loss. Chip Miller, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Todd Donna, nowhere to go with the football. Excellent coverage in the Appalachian secondary. You can see him flush, almost goes down. As you mentioned Miller makes a stop for the apps. That's a huge loss. Marshall needs the app 31 for a first down. Sec this is second and 23. Screen. Screen to Parker, he's got some blockers. Back into app territory to the 48-yard line. Pretty good call. Nine-yard gainer. You get some of it back. The clock continues to run. Eight and a half minutes to go. It's third down and 16. Another look. Screen all the way. Excellent call in third and long. Parker gets those shoulders squared. Picks up nine. Four wide receivers for Marshall. Crucial third down situation. Donnan intending Picked for Sean Goodwin. The pass is intercepted. He's going to go. On his way. Johnny Let's Smith. Go. Touchdown, Appalachian State.
his first interception of the year, and boy, was it a big one. And when he got the football, his running back skills took over. Todd got it. Want to go downtown. Johnny Smith runs underneath, picks it off, and Smith knows what to do with it. Extra point is good. The folks in Boone are excited. And they have reason to be excited. Yosef and the app cheerleaders. With a lot of a lot of push-ups to do. Johnny Smith with an electrifying 70-yard interception return for a touchdown. David, that might have just let the uh, air out of the Marshall balloon. That will be awfully tough to come back from. Another look. Todd Donnan sets his feet. He runs underneath. Johnny Smith, 5'9", Jr. Whoa, what a job Smith did to get the end zone. Under eight to play. Appalachian State, 24. Marshall, seven. Sunny tonight, Appalachian has been the team with the emotion, and they've made the plays. I, I don't think I can add a whole lot to it, David. You said a mouthful. This is out of bounds. He'll take it on the 35. So Marshall's got good field position. But now they trail by 17. I told you before the broadcast, you might recall, I said this is going to be a way of a football game. I can tell yesterday in practice, this Appalachian crowd, boy, they had one thing on their mind. This place is so, so tough to come to and win. And when you look at Appalachian, as I mentioned earlier, Dave, they've lost two games, but only by a total of five points. And one of those to an ACC team, Wake Forest. Marshall's last win here at Kid Brewer Stadium came in the playoffs back in 1987. Rain continues to fall. Marshall needs some big plays. Danny White on the reception. Trying to run a delay to the tight end. To the 37-yard line. That's a gain of only two. You know, you look at the Georgia Southern score, and you say, well, how in the world? Last week, Georgia Southern beat Zapp, beats Appalachian. And three or four weeks ago, Marshall goes down to Georgia Southern, and I mean bumps him. But I'll tell you what. Got to wonder, Sonny, you're down 17. You've got the ball. It's time to get into the hurry up, isn't it? Well, I think you've got to go downfield with it. You've got to go downfield. Don and look for Parker. Picks off his secondary receiver. It's Brian Reed who makes a great adjustment on the ball and is near the first down marker at the 45. And now Marshall is in the hurry up attack. Reed lays out. Makes a heck of a catch. They're going to measure this one. So the clock will stop with 6.55 left. But I'll tell you what, the herd's got a lot of work to do. Well, the tone for this game may have been set on the opening drive when Jamie Coleman made a big interception for Appalachian State. It would be the first of three first-half turnovers for Marshall. You can say that Marshall has not played very well, and I don't think they have. But I tell you, Appalachians had a whole lot to do with the way they play. Yo, what's up? What's up? This has been a whale of a football game. You just knew everybody else in the Southern Conference was rooting for Appalachian tonight. <laughs> to bring Marshall. If the don't stop Marshall, nobody does. Well, Marshall has three remaining home games following tonight's test in Boone. Homecoming next week in Huntington against the Citadel, then on the road to East Tennessee State at the Mini Dome. The Buccaneers lost a heartbreaker by one point, 24-23 to Georgia Southern today. Quarterback State for the Don first down. Donnan's got it. And then Furman has to come to the big house. Old rivals Marshall and Furman will wrap up the regular season. 
when you look at it, when it's over with, unless there's a huge, huge upset somewhere along the way, looks like Appalachian and Marshall will have the same identical record in the uh, Southern Conference. Appalachian has four games left at UTC next week, a home date with Liberty at Western, and they'll wrap it up with a home date against VMI. What a big hit. Parker holds on, but Tony Perry with the takedown. That was a big-time hit. You mentioned their games left, but there are three conference games left, and Marshall has three conference games left. Donna takes a shot after he gets rid of the football. Boy, Perry says hello there to Chris Parker. Donna across the middle. Incomplete. Looked like he had it for a split second. The officials waved it off. Well, for a minute, Sean Goodwin had the football. We mentioned early in the broadcast, Sonny, that Marshall is playing without the services of the Southern Conference leading receiver and one of the most dangerous punt return and kick returners in the league, and Tim Martin, the sophomore from Saudi Daisy, Tennessee, unable to go tonight and because of a Marshall, you, you just hope one of those young guys would step up tonight, and they haven't been able to do it. Now Martin ruptured a tendon in his thumb, his left thumb, on Tuesday had surgery on Wednesday, scratched for the game tonight. Questionable, very questionable for next week's game with the Citadel. Marshall had hoped to have Ricky Carter back tonight, but Carter is in street clothes on the herd sidelines. I think his hand is healing very, very nicely according to Dr. Dr. Ricard, the team physician, but they didn't want to take any chances tonight because they'd like to have him back here in the next couple of weeks. And you get the thing hit tonight, and then you might lose it for the rest of the year. I know a lot of fans back in Huntington and in West Virginia and on Sports South, KBL, WNBT, and the Falls Church, Virginia, who has who have followed this football team all season long, thought that maybe the way Marshall was romping through the early games, that this Marshall team could go 15-0 to a national championship. They are trying to go to the national title game for the fourth consecutive year but they've hit a big roadblock tonight here at Appalachian. Unless they can make a miraculous comeback, they're gonna have one loss on their record. <laughs> Third down and four. Marshall at the App 48. 6.09 to play. App 24, Marshall seven. Donnan going long for Goodwin. He's yes, got sir, it. He's got it at the 20. Goodwin takes it to the 19-yard line. Excellent throw and a heck of a catch. And Marshall will go right to the line of scrimmage. The hurry up is in effect. Hurd needs three scores. Marshall hasn't scored since late in the first quarter. They're bringing six. Don and looking to the end zone. That was a great play in the end zone. Saved the touchdown. Jamie Coleman slapped the potential touchdown pass away from Sean Goodwin. As you mentioned, Jamie Coleman, he saved six. Another look. Got man to man in the secondary. Todd Donnett. Great play. Intended for Goodwin. But that's a big time defensive play. Jamie Combe. Clock stopped 551. Just a sophomore. Laurenburg, North Carolina has been a real pleasant recruiting ground for Jerry Moore. Apps coming on the blitz. Donnan over the middle. Caught Brian Reed inside the 10 to the 7. And Todd Donnan took a lick. The chains will move. First and goal. So Marshall is moving the ball, but is it too late? Donnan calling the play at the line of scrimmage. Donnan, incomplete, intended for Goodwin at the goal line. Pass was broken up again by Jamie Coleman. Pretty good coverage by the app second there. Really not a whole lot of room there to get the ball in there. So Appalachian State, Sonny, has done something tonight that no team previously this season has been able to do to the Thundering Herd offensive attack, shut it down. 
Well, as you know, until tonight, the herd had not been tested. Well, they've gotten a severe test here at Appalachian. Second and goal at the seven. Sprints, looking to throw. Looking, throwing. End zone, touchdown. touchdown. Danny White, his second touchdown catch. Big Danny White uncovers. Boy, Donnan did a great job to feather that bad boy in there to White. And he took a pretty good shot. DiBernardo applied the pressure. Todd Donnan was able to get rid of the football. Big Danny White, the Marshall tight end, was able to come up with it with six. Another look. Todd Donnan sprints to his right. Danny White just uncovers in the end zone. Todd Donnan takes a pretty good lick. Tim Openlander on to attempt the extra point. Yes. And so Openlander fires it through. It's 24-14. Openlander now on the season on his extra point tries is 40 of 43. Some subdued thunder thunderclaps across the way. Marshall needs two scores, 522 to go in the game. Still time. Marshall has two timeouts, as does Appalachian. What Marshall's got to do right now on defense, David, they've got to make the apps turn it over. And the apps got one thing in mind, hang on to the football and take some time off the clock. Appalachian has dominated their opponents all season long in the fourth quarter coming into play tonight outscoring their foes 44 to 9 in the final period. But Marshall puts a touchdown on the board their first score since late in the first quarter Danny White with a pair of touchdown catches tonight. He's got three now on the year. And after a long dry spell. Todd Donnan appears to be heating up again and that could be bad news for that man Jerry Moore. You need the ball twice Sonny. But again, I think you need you need a turnover by the Appalachian offense. What do you think, though? Is an onside kick in order here with five and a half to play? I think you got to kick it down field. Too much time left to give Appalachian the ball there at midfield. Appalachian's got their hands team out there. All the folks with good hands anticipating an onside kick. The way they're lined up, they might just get that onside. It is yes, an onside sir. kick. It's a good bounce for Marshall. That was awfully close, but it goes out of bounds. And it'll be Appalachian's ball. So Marshall did try the onside kick. Almost got there. Unsuccessful, however. Here's another look. Watch the outside people for Marshall. They're right there at the ball. Melvin so, Cunningham was the closest to it. So after misfiring on the onside kick, Appalachian, good field position. Starting from their own 46. Satterfield, naked boot. And Roger Johnson drags him down. At the 50. Brian Stump makes a stop. Boy, this Satterfield, is he not a competitor? He was tough on that one. Put his shoulder pads down and drove into Johnson. Scoring drive, 10 plays, 65 yards, two and a half minutes. Donnan with his second touchdown pass of the night to Danny White. Clock, an ally of App. Inside of five minutes to go. Clicking down. The Apps want to keep it on the ground. It's second down and seven. Satterfield checks. Short drop pass complete. First down to the tight end. John McFall, the tight end, makes the grab and comes up a little gimpy. A little bit. Going to walk that thing off. Appalachian had a running play call. Satterfield checked at the line of scrimmage. Hit his tight end. John McFall. A little bit of a seam route. And McFall picks up the first down. And the clock starts again inside of four and a half minutes to go. 
a critical first down for Appalachian. Jerry Moore with some nice play calling there, a naked boot, and then a flip to the tight end. Their offensive coordinator, Rob Best, what a game he's called. Mm -hmm. Along with the head man, Toss Sweet. With the pitch, the hooks. Spinning inside the 40 down to the 39. And that's a five yard gain on first down. Albert Barber makes his stop for the herd. But as you mentioned, Hooks picks up five. Three forty to go. Appalachian with the ball at the Marshall 39. Appalachian led this game 10-7 at halftime. They lead now 24-14. Hooks burrows his way to the 35. It'll be third down and two. Again, they continue to take time off that clock. Three minutes left in this football game. Caps in front by 10. Third down and two. Big third down here. A jumbo look. No way. No, sir. That's going to be short. Hit in the backfield by Cohen. Too much penetration. And Hooks can't get there. We're going to tell you about our bank one players of the game momentarily. Marshall calls timeout. They're going to burn one of their two remaining timeouts. It's a fourth down and two. So from the 35-yard line, what's the call? Well, they actually got to punt the football. They look like that's they're going to punt the football. That, that's what the call is, David. You try to kick a field goal from here, you're looking at about a 52 or 53 yard. Yeah, also, no way. well, on the other hand, Sonny, though, with two minutes and 36 seconds, if you could manage to get a two yard gain, you could probably run out the clock or get very close to it. Remember, Marshall's got to have the ball twice. They trail by 10. Now, on the other hand, you don't want to give it to Marshall the football at the 35 yard line. <laughs> you just punt it down and say, hey, go to the length of the field yep. with it. We'll see if uh, Coach Moore has the same thing in mind. Well, Marshall has never won a Southern Conference football championship outright. They tied for the title with Furman once in the late 80s. Jim Donnan and his troops felt like this would be the year, and it still may be. Could be. They'll need some help. But unless they make a furious comeback, they're going to be back in a three-way tie with Western Carolina and Appalachian State for the top spot. And it looks like uh, the apps. They're going to go for it, Sonny, yes, or at sir. least they're going to go to the line of scrimmage. Let's see if they go for it. Yes, sir. Satterfield. He's going to yes, make sir. it. First down. With room to spare. John Duncan had him, but let him get away. And this pretty much seals it for the apps, because all I'll do is run out the clock. If the apps went out and Marsha wins out, they'll tie for the Southern Conference Championship. You got to remember, the apps have to play Western Carolina. That's right. One of those two teams will definitely get another loss unless that game ends in a tie. And that would help Marshall. First down and 10. Close to two minutes to go in the game. Marshall can only stop the clock one more time. Scott to the 29. And they'll keep it on the ground. And when you think about heroes for Appalachian State tonight, there's a bushel basket full of them. Scott Satterfield, Chip Hooks. Their offensive line that they kept this Marshall defense ranked first in the league in total D, scoring D, passing D, and rushing D. And Alan Grant has kept them backed up most of the night. Don't forget that wobbler of a 41-yard field goal by Jay Sutton. Defensively, Peoples, Coakley, Johnny Smith, 
with an electrifying return. Whistles everywhere. A minute 25 to go. Too much time. That'll cost him five. You know, when you're the number one team in the country, David, you get everybody's best shot. And Marshall sure got Appalachian's best shot here tonight in Boone, North Carolina. I mentioned earlier tonight that Appalachian has not lost a home night game since 1977. That streak is going to remain intact. And who knows, after this game tonight, Jerry they might play them all at night. Yeah, they, they would like to maybe keep that magic going. Hooks. He's collared. Very little game. And Marshall burns their final timeout. With a minute 16 to go, Marshall is out of timeouts. Trailing by 10. Appalachian 24, Marshall 14. You don't think those folks are feeling any pain? And they're getting ready to storm the field down there. They're rocking and boom. They are going to storm the field. The student section is filing out, and they are getting ready to rush the field. They are excited at Boone, North Carolina. And they have every reason to be. There they are. That's a great shot there. This will make your season and make a whole lot of other things, too. Jerry Moore led Appalachian to the Southern Conference title in 1991. He was the Southern Conference Coach of the Year in that season. He's had Appalachian in the playoffs in 89, 91, and 92. They were ranked 24th this week in the latest 1AA Top 25. And they're sending a message to the rest of the league that they could be heading back to the playoffs. He's the number one team in the country. Stopped at the 35. It's going to be a long, long ride for the Marshall team back to Huntington, West Virginia. And all those herd faithful that made the trip to Boone. I mean, a real long ride. It'll be kind of a long ride for us, too. There they are. They got goalposts written all over them. And now there is a gang surrounding the goalpost down at the open end of the stadium. And they are on the field. And that goalpost is going to be vapor. It's history. The end zone is covered with fans. 30 seconds to go in the game. 24-14. <laughs> and there's no question those goalposts are coming down. The real question is, will this game be able to be completed? Well, they've got 30 seconds left on the clock. And they got to get them off the field so that they can play out there. Here it goes. State troopers down there on the field. What chance do they have? Let's take a look at our bank one players of the game. Chip Hooks tonight, 10 carries for 91 yards. 24 carries for 91 yards. And well over 160 yards in total offense tonight. And for Marshall, our Ashland Oil bank one player of the game is senior tight end Danny White. Two touchdown receptions from quarterback Todd Donnan. Dangerous situation. Hey, but it's going to be lights out for some folks down there. And now at the security hey, patrol Coach, here in Boone Coach Moore. is. Coach Moore down there. Yeah, that, that's Jerry Moore saying, get off the field. We want to finish this thing. We've got to finish the football game. And unless they get off, it won't be finished. Hey, 
It's fourth down. Marshall is out of timeouts. And Jerry Moore, I thought that was a classy move going down to the end zone. He doesn't want any of the students hurt. They deserve to celebrate this big victory, the biggest in a long time here in Boone. One of the biggest in the history of the school, if not the biggest. And here's that fourth down play. On a roll. He'll just try to run it out. Satterfield is dragged down by Vince Parker, and Marshall will take over the football with just 22 seconds left to go in the game. <laughs> you know, a minute ago, when the goalpost came down and the, and the game was in question whether or not we'd finish it or not, so the, the inmates are running the asylum there for a minute. <laughs> Great college spirit. But it, we don't want anybody to get hurt. And we do want to finish this game. And what a day it's been for Southern Conference football. Terrific game earlier today. Georgia Southern defeating East Tennessee State 24-23. And Appalachian ready to knock Marshall from the ranks of the unbeaten. Donnan with the pass. Complete Ryan Reed out of bounds. At the app 46. 15 seconds to go. We know. Marshall is going to score a touchdown down at that end. They may need those goalposts. Right now, they need more of the goalposts. <laughs> you need to get it outside so the receiver can catch the football and step out of bounds to stop the clock. Anything inside, and it's over with. Don and simply throws the ball away. Seven seconds to go. Possibly one more play. Sonny, sometimes when you have a long winning streak to open the season like Marshall has experienced this season, a loss before the playoffs begin is a good thing. It takes the pressure off. It takes the pressure off, and you get kind of get that wake-up call. And the thing about it, David, if you think about it, Marshall has played awfully well for a long, long time. And tonight, they certainly didn't play like they wanted to play or like they're capable of playing, but we talked about it before. Appalachian had a whole lot to do with it. But the veil of invincibility is about to come down. The pass nearly caught. That's it. The ball game is over. Jerry Moore and Appalachian State upsets the number one team in 1AA football tonight at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, 24 to 14. And the fans celebrate a well-deserved victory by the ASU Mountaineers. The two coaches beat out there in the middle of the field. I don't know how they found each other, but they sure did. Well, the party is on in Boone. Appalachian with the big upset of top rank Marshall. Back in a minute. Appalachian with the big upset over top rank Marshall tonight in Boone, 24 14. And down amongst the sea of humanity, somewhere is Mark Martin. All right, we got, we got Jerry Moore. Congratulations. Keys to the football game. Well, I like the defense play.